続々登場 PC エンジンニューゲームそしてご存知天外魔境中身でどうだだから PC エンジンバイハルソン PC エンジンデュオ CD ドムがゲームの世界を変えたスーパー CD ドムソフトのベストセラー「天外魔境2」デュオだからできるスーパーエンターテイメント映画「t u r b o g r a p h i c 1 6 is about to knock video games back into the stone age it's 10,000 years ago you're a cave dude you are carnivorous you've got to bonk 28 stages of prehistoric bad guys to rescue your excellent looking princess and you've only got one weapon bonk's adventure ゲート・オブ・サンダーシューティング新時代の幕開け人類が未だかつて体験しえなかった空前絶後の稲妻が走るスーパー CD ロムロムで過激に登場ゲート・オブ・サンダー仕掛けのない新しい RPG ゲームボーイアドバンスオリエンタルブルー青の天外
stop the Raven Clan. And whatever you do, don't stop shooting. ファンタジーとシューティングの華麗なる融合。今シューティング最終形態。ウィンズオブサンダー。ドラボッチャンはトマトが好きドラボッチャン春にスーパーファミコンで会いましょうナグザッとバイハダソンバイハダソン1989年天外魔教シリーズは世界発動 CD ドムソフトの Today, we mark a new conquest, this time focusing on a company that did a lot behind the scenes. Sometimes they designed their own games, sometimes they helped with writing or even assisted with graphics. Maybe they even simply ported a game. So we begin our journey exploring the library of a rather mysterious company, one that brought us Far East of Eden, Galaxy Fräulein, Lords of Thunder, and Soccer Wars. Red Entertainment. up i kind of have a voice back thank goodness thank the lord that uh i have been blessed by such you know healing abilities i don't know i i just i just shut the fuck up for a long time that's what i had to do what's up everybody my name is fortifier and uh tonight we're gonna be continuing the zork lineage by playing zork 2 which i've beaten before um way back in the day this is a this is a little story about me right um we were in Gulf Shores, Alabama. It was a it was a trip that we took. <coughs> took a trip down there, and we went to Sam's Club. And every now and then, I could con my grandparents into buying me some software. And there were tons of cool games that I could have got from my computer. I didn't have a great computer, so I couldn't play good good quality games like Hitman or anything. So uh, there's this thing called the Zork Collection, or was it the Zork Anthology? It may have been. It was. Probably mid 2000s, and uh, it had Zork one, two, three, and Zork zero, with demos for uh, Inquisitor, Nemesis, Simon the Sorcerer, and then I think it had the uh, the Spellbringer trilogy as well. I never played the Spellbringer trilogy because it was frustrating to me. But uh, we're gonna be playing Zork two, which again I've already beaten, so you're gonna see me kind of power through this it's not hard uh, one of the big differences between Zork 1 and 2 is that we're gonna have this douchebag wizard who's gonna come around and try to finger our asshole all the time so you're gonna see me saving a lot we have to because he will cast spells like fumble which will make us drop our shit at least one item uh, flinch which will make us run out of a room into another room it's a it's a it's a really different game and if you look at one of the reasons I enjoyed Zork 1 so much is because the way it's created it's not just a linear one story world. It's actually three or four stories. <clears throat> so, when I draw out our map this time, instead of drawing a creative map like I did before, I'm going to draw what's called a box map because I find it to be more efficient. And I should have done it, but I didn't. Um, in Zork 1, our only big threat, we have one active threat. 
that can kill us at any given time. Or technically two. We got the Gru, but I'm smart with my torch, so that doesn't seem to happen. Um, the Thief. And we, we had a field day with the Thief. The Thief kicked our ass quite a few times, but the Troll and the Cyclops have gimmicks tied to them, as, as do the Spirits. So for this one, we're going to be starting off in the Stone Barrow at the end of the, uh, the first game, right? So we're going to go ahead and get that going. What's up, Big Rud? Big Rude? I always forget how to say that because I'm an idiot. And we got uh, Jeff here as well. What's up, Jeff? How are you? Hope you're doing well. Direct sequel. All three of them are. And it's strange because they're not linear, right? <laughs> they're not linear in the sense of, like, the story matters, but, like, location-wise, they are. And it always blew my mind. Always just blew it out of the water. Zork has a very strange lore, too. I don't know. There, there's people who are fucking obsessed with Zork. I... I don't understand why. It's not a bad game. It's just like, I don't know. Activision owns Zork, and there's just we'll never see anything else from Zork. So I don't know. This is this is very much a look into the past of uh, video game history, through and through. All right, let me go and get my emulator up. We are using a Windows 98 or 95 emulator. It works beautifully. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. Boot up the Windows 95 machine. <coughs> Encyclopedia for Bazica? Oh no, I didn't shut it down correctly. Damn, this crazy exit. Zork Anthology, let's go ahead and get into Zork 2. Oh, we need our music. We need our royalty-free music. Let me go ahead and get that up there. By the way, this is what you were talking about, right? The Lost Treasures of Infocom. Do, 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 do. I love anthologies. Anthologies are the best. <coughs> Damn, look at that butt there. Holy shit. Uh, let's see. What are we, what are we doing? Thank you. It, it, I feel better. Uh, what, am, what am I trying to do? Royalty free. Exploring music. That's what we want. It's going good. How are you? All right, Zork 2, where you at? Mm. All right, all ready? Let's do this. All right, so... Inside the barrow. This is going to be our start area. We're going to mark it at the top right because that's where it, I believe it starts. Inside the barrow. You're inside an ancient barrow hidden deep within a dark forest. The barrow opens into a narrow tunnel at its southern end. You can see a faint glow at the far end. A strangely familiar brass lantern is laying on the ground. You remember that? It's from Zork 1. Uh, sort of Elvish worksmanship is on the ground. That is important, right? It's important because it glows blue when there's an enemy or a threat near us. So what we're going to do is we're going to take take the sword and we're going to take the lamp. Now we've got both of those. Now before we go south, we're going to save because like I said, this one can be an absolute douchebag. Uh, save, let's see, it's going to be Zork 2-1. Sweet. Alright, let's go ahead and look. Inside, uh, yeah, let's go south. All right, so we can go south. You're standing at the southern end of a narrow tunnel where it opens into a wide cavern. The cavern is dimly illuminated by phosphorescent mosses clinging to its high ceiling. A deep ravine winds through the cavern with a small stream at the bottom. The walls of the ravine are steep and crumbly. A footbridge crosses the ravine to the south. All right, so we're gonna box this. 
We don't have any ups or downs right now, at least not what we can see. This is the narrow tunnel. And we're going to mark this as having a lamp and a sword. I love drawing maps. I don't, I don't think y'all understand how fucking therapeutic it can be to draw maps. We're only two, two boxes in, alright? Two boxes in. Shit gets me going. What's up, Baz? How are you? Shit gets me going. Alright, uh, let's see. We're gonna turn on our lamp. Do I want to yet? Let's go south. Okay, south to the footbridge. We're kind of exploring again, because it's been a long time since I've played this. Uh, path runs north and south from here, crossing a deep ravine. Uh, let's go north twice. And just make sure that nothing... Northeast, north... Okay, we can't, we can't go any of those ways, so we know for a fact that it's only south that we can go. So we're going to restore... Zork 2-1. Two, two Lamp and a sword. Okay. We're going to go south. We're in the... Say good bid, missing work. Hope you're getting better. I'm getting I'm getting a little bit better. Alright, so that's the footbridge with the narrow tunnel. Footbridge. South goes to the Great Cavern, okay? <clears throat> oh, I love that shit. What's up, Riz? How are you? This is the center of a great cavern carved out of limestone. Stalactites and stalagmites, many sizes are everywhere. The room glows with dim light provided by phosphorescent moss, and weird shadows move all around you. A narrow path winds southwest among the stalagmites. Another leads northeast. So the question is, if I go north, will it... Okay, so technically that is a one-way path. Northeast will probably bring us, what, back to the footbridge? Yeah. So it's technically northeast, and that's a one-way path as well. Interesting. North, north, all right, south, south, footbridge, west, can't go that way, south. Can we go west? Can't go west. Can we go northwest? Can't go northwest. Northeast brings us there, south, southwest? No. So obviously moves are going to matter in this. We have a limited amount of time in this game, if I recall. This one's a mean one. Zork 2 is mean. We haven't encountered the wizard yet, but we're going to. The wizard is a douchebag. He's a fucking taint, and I hate, I hate him so much. Because he just... There's a few things he'll do. And the reason we want to save so much is because one of his spells... I don't recall which one it is, but he'll straight up yoink one of your shit and bring it to his study. And that adds in so much extra backtracking <laughs> that it's just smarter to, to play RNG and restore your, your thing to prevent, you know, him. Prevent him from doing the thing. All right. All right, we're going to restore Zork 2-1. We're going to save. This is going to be Zork 2-1. I'm going to do it this way so it's just easier. So we go south, south, footbridge, south, Great Cavern. Is there anything east of the cavern? Can't go that way. So what we're doing is we're just blocking out all the areas that we can't go. We can't go southeast. Can we go south? Can't go south. So southwest is going to be our only option. So we're going to restore Zork 2-1. And I'm going to mark that here. I'm going to write that down um, in little numbers on the side. Zork 2-1. I hope that y'all y'all could see how my brain works when I play these games. Because I, I know I could just fucking power through this if I really wanted to. But I want to... We're, we're playing this together, right? That's just the way that it works. Okay, so we go south, 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 and then we're going southwest. 
This brings us to the shallow ford. Shallow ford. Now, off the top of my head, I know that there's a bank far, far, far to the west, and far, far, far to the southwest is the wizard's douchebag cavern, right? <clears throat> Hate it so much. It's stupid. <clears throat> Here at the southern edge of a great cavern, to the south across the shallow fort is a dark tunnel which looks like it was once enlarged and smooth. To the north, a narrow path winds among stalagmites. Dim light illuminates the cavern. Alright, so we're going to save. It's going to be Zork 2-1. I'm going to replace this because there's no point. So it says that we can go to the... The north, so we're going to go north. That brings us back to the, the great cavern. So again, this is another strange one-way path. We encounter these a lot more in Zork 2 than we will in any other Zorks, including the Spellbringer trilogy, right? Sucks. Alright, we're gonna restore Zork 2-1. Then we're gonna go south. And we're gonna wait. 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 Just kidding. Alright, so no Gru is gonna get us if we just walk into a room. But good to know that that's a dark room. Um, did I just save? No, okay. Uh, so we're gonna go... So south is just, in general, a dark place. Oh, I died. Okay. A GRU! Alright, so right off the bat, we gotta turn our lamp on. Alright, turn on the lamp. Uh, do 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 do, looking at our map. So we have a. It's north and air path, and there's stagmites. Okay, so north will bring us back to the Grand Cavern. To the you're at the southern edge of a great cavern. To the south, across the shallow fort, is a dark tunnel which looks like it was once enlarged. Okay, so south. So south brings us to the dark tunnel. Which is not of any importance. This is a dark tunnel with dim light to the northeast. So again, this is another damn one way. Tunnel is smooth but dusty, filled with twigs and leaves. The breeze, which becomes deeper, is tunnel branches to a wide corridor leading southwest and a narrow one leading southeast. So we have two paths we could take. We can go southwest and southeast. Let's go southeast. North end of garden. Okay, so now we're in the garden. North garden. This is the northern end of a formal garden, hedges inside the cavern walls, and if you don't look up, the illusion of a cloudy day outside. The light comes from a large growth of glowing moss on the roof of the cave. A break in the hedge is almost overgrown to the north. A carefully manicured path leads south. Okay, so we've got a carefully manicured path leading south. In the center of a rose bed is a small open structure painted white. It appears to be a fucking gazebo! Ergrus? Now right, we're gonna go into the gazebo. Alright, so this is a gazebo in the midst of a formal garden. It is a cool and restful here. Uh, this is a secondary location inside of here. Let's circle that with a G. It's cool and restful here. A tea table adorns the center of the gazebo. Sitting on um, the table is a matchbook, a china teapot, a placemat, a newspaper, and a letter opener. The unicorn is peacefully cropping grass at the north end of the garden. There's something hanging around his neck. The sword is glowing with a faint blue glow. It means an enemy is nearby. So we can take all those items. We've got a matchbook, china teapot, placemat, newspaper, and a letter opener. And we're gonna save, because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look at all these. Look, matchbook. Alright, inspect matchbook. Examine matchbook. Okay. Examine teapot.
Uh, our, let's see. Famed adventurer to explore Great Underground Empire. Correspondents report that a world-famous and battle-hardened adventurer has been seen in the vicinity of the Great Underground Empire. Local crews have been reported sharpening their slavering fangs. Zork 2, The Wizard of Froboz, was written by Dave Lebling and Mark Blank. Two creators of uh, Infocom, by the way. One of the many guys who kind of put that together. A unicorn is peacefully cropping grass in north in the garden. There's something hanging around his neck. Your sword's glowing with a bro. Strange little man. There he is. Little asshole. Uh, sword's glowing with a faint blue glow. A strange little man in a long cloak appears suddenly in the room. He is wearing a high-pointed hat embroidered with astrological signs. He has a long, stringy, and unkempt beard. The wizard draws forth his wand and waves in your direction. It begins to glow with a faint blue glow. There is a loud cracking noise. Blue smoke rises from out of the wizard's sleeve. He sighs and disappears. So he fucked up. No spell hit us. But that's the kind of shit that's going to happen all the time. Relentlessly, that's going to happen. It sucks. Sometimes his spells fuck us over. And that's just what we got to deal with. Got to contend with it. All right, let's restore. Zork 2-2. Two, two. Restore Zork 2-2. Two, two. There we go. All right, look. All right, we're in the gazebo. So we don't need to be in the gazebo anymore. We can exit gazebo. Beautiful unicorn here. We don't want to mess with it. All right, so the, the wizard's close. So what we're going to do is we're going to go north. And that brings us back to the dark tunnel. And then northeast should bring us back to the shallow ford. Now that we're in the shallow ford, there's water here, so we're going to fill up teapot. Fill teapot with water. Alright, full of water, cool. Now we're about to get to one of the more frustrating areas of this game, and Moo, who's played this probably countless times, will know exactly what I'm talking about. It's known as the carousel room. And it is the bane of everybody's existence in Zork 2. <laughs> <coughs> the carousel room is probably the worst thing ever created for, uh... <laughs> uh dude, the fucking carousel room is the stupidest thing ever. So we're going to be restoring quite often when we get to that part. Alright, so we're going to go... We're in the shallow forward, we're going to go south. We're going to go southwest, and this is the path near the stream. What's up, Divine? How are you? Map it out. Path near stream. The path follows the south edge of a deep ravine and heads northeast, which is what we already know. That'll take us to the dark tunnel. A tunnel heads southwest. All right, so we have some idea of which way we can go. Nearing to a rather tight crawl, a faint whirring sound can be heard in that direction. On the east is a ruined archway choked with vegetation. So east will likely bring us potentially to the uh, the north garden. Let's go ahead and save. Okay, so east brings us to the formal garden. What happens if we go north? North in the garden. All right, southwest. Boom. So we know that this is going to connect. Formal garden. You're good? Just exhausted tonight? I'm sorry. I hope you get some good rest tonight. Alright, you are frozen solid. I'm frozen solid? Oh, the wizard got me. He got me with frozen! What a douchebag. Alright, restore. Restore. I can't even load my game. Wait, 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 wait. Restore. Wait, 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 wait. Fucking douchebag. Restore. <laughs> Zork 22. What an asshole! Alright, so if we go southwest, it's time for the carousel room. You're in a large circular room. Oh, I hate this so much. Carousel room sucks. You're in a large circular room whose high ceiling is lost in gloom. Eight identical passages leave the room. A loud whirring sound comes from all around, and you feel sort of disoriented in here. Did you see that eclipse I DM'd you three days ago? I think I did. I think I watched it. And on Discord? Uh... 
Okay. Alright, so what we want to do... We're going to drop everything here. Because this doesn't matter. We're going to drop letter opener. We're going to drop the newspaper. We don't need it. Alright, we're petrified. Drop everything but our teapot. Drop sword. Drop mat. Drop the... Matchbook. Alright, we got the teapot and yeah. Okay, we're gonna save. Save Zork 23. Alright. Oh, this is gonna suck. Here we go. First try! First try! <laughs> I wonder if they fixed it in this, uh, this thing, because that's usually not what happens. At all. Alright, Southeast is the riddle room. That is usually not at all what happens. Usually we end up in, like, the fucking... Minra room, or the room 8. Yeah. <laughs> I, it makes me wonder if... I don't know about that. I, I don't know about that. That's suspect. That's the riddle room. This is the room with a bear on all sides. There's a great exit down in the northwest corner. Yes, there is. To the east, there's a great closed door made of stone. Alright, so we have a big closed door. We can go ahead and draw an arch there. Can never progress in these games. Always give up after eight minutes. Just gotta think outside the box a little bit. Just wait till we play, like... The, what's considered the expert games from info games which are, are not info games uh, infocom because like cutthroat ballyhoo those are some hard games zork was like the middle ground for what was acceptable for kids and, and adults and then you start getting to just the obscenely difficult adventure games from them it's strange Okay, above the stone, no man shall pass this door without solving this riddle. What is tall as a house, round as a cup, and all the king's horses can't draw it up? A well. So what we're going to do is we're going to say... There we go. Good old-fashioned riddle room, bro. How many times did you struggle getting into the riddle room? <laughs> There's a deafening clap of thunder and the stone door quietly swings open to reveal a passageway beyond. I gotta pull these pants up. I'm wearing my, uh, my whatchamacallit, my, uh, PT pants. Right, we're gonna go east into the pearl room. Yep. Do, 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 do. All right, we're in the pearl room. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. All right, pearl room. This is a former broom closet. The exits are to the east and west, which we already know. West will bring us to the, uh, whatchamacallit, east. Hmm. Pearl necklace there with dungeons, large pearls. I don't think I want to take it. No, nah, we're not going to take that yet. Alright, circular room. Not the same as the carousel room. The carousel room is a douchebag. This is the circular room. This is a damp circular room whose walls are made of brick and mortar. The roof of this room is not visible, but there appear to be some etchings on the walls. There is a passageway to the west. There is a wooden bucket here, three feet in diameter. And three feet high. All right. Oh, goodness. Okay. So now, it's three feet in diameter, which means we can get into it. Three feet would be up to our, our legs. So what we're going to do is we're going to enter the bucket. Now I'm in the bucket. Now what we're going to do is we're going to pour water into bucket. Now we're up at the top of the well. All 
right? Top of the well in the wooden bucket. You're in the top of the well. Well done. There are etchings on the side of the well. There's a small crack across the floor at the entrance to a room in the east. But it would be crossed easily. The wooden bucket contains contains this. All right, so we're going to get out of the bucket. The bucket. And then we're going to go east to the tea room. This is a small room containing a large oblong table. All right, so this is top of well. Go to the east. To the tea room. There's a small room containing a large oblong table, no doubt, set for afternoon tea. It is clear from the objects on the table that the users were indeed mad. So this is an Alice in Wonderland reference, by the way. In the eastern corner of the room is a small hole, no more than four inches high. We cannot go into that. Uh, there are passages leading away to the east and the northwest. To the passages to the west and the northwest. Okay. Uh, do, 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 do. All right, so we got four different cakes. The only one we care about is the orange cake. I don't remember what the green and red do. Blue, they they change your size, right? So we can't go through it now. But if we eat, we eat the cake, we're good to go. So what we're gonna do is, uh, all right, we're gonna leave the orange. We're gonna take all the other ones. Take green cake. Take red cake. Take blue cake. Right. We're going to eat the green cake, which should shrink us down. Boom. Suddenly, the rooms have become very large, though everything you're carrying seems to be its normal size. This is an enormous room, in the center of which are four wooden posts delineating a rectangular area, which is the table that we were underneath. Uh, in fact, all objects in this room appear to be abnormally large. To the east is a passageway, which is what we're going to go through, if I remember right. Uh, there are large gaping chasms to the west and the northwest, which, when we're regular size, is just a regular door. It's just a regular door. All right, let's go east pool room this is a large room one half of which is depressed me too me too one half of me is depressed one inch one half inch all right uh let's see salty water flows from a large leak in the ceiling <laughs> hey this room is my spiritual area the only exit to the west a stopped glass flask with a skull and crossbones marking is here the flask is filled with some clear liquid the leak has submerged in a depressed area in a pool of tears. There's a hazy something. What was that? Okay. What's up, Refix? How are you? Can we get a shout out for Refix? That guy's awesome. The leak has submerged in a depressed area in a pool of tears. There's a hazy something in the deepest part of the pool. All right. So we're going to throw the red cake into pool of tears. Throw the red cake in the pool of tears. Most of the pool evaporates, revealing a slightly damp, but still valuable package of rare candies. The red cake must be pretty strong stuff since it remains intact. All right, we're going to take those candies. Take the candies. Taken. Cool. All right. Uh, do, 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 do. The West. I'm doing all right. Thanks for asking. I'm doing fine. Just uh, trying to get my voice like all the way back. <sighs> Good news is pretty soon we're going to get a robot and that robot will be able to disable the carousel room, which is great because I don't know about you, but if you've ever played this, getting stuck in the carousel room, then getting fucking bombarded by the wizard are two of the most irritating things that happen in this game and they can they can happen at the same time which is really shitty all right we're back in the posts room uh we're gonna eat the blue cake which should bring us back to normal size right now we're gonna go east again oh my bad it's the other way what's the other one we can do so post and tea room are the same it depends on if we're big or small. And since we're we're big, post room's not going to matter. We can't get small again, so we're going to go northwest. Figure out how to get further in the Sega Saturn version. Man, I beat it in one day. You really got to step up your game, learn some Japanese. I didn't. I didn't learn. I didn't beat the Saturn version. I beat the. Uh, this is the original. But um, I'm I'm jealous of the Saturn's version of Zork. That is gorgeous. And it's it's like fully fleshed out right like the environments you, when you start the house you can see or start the game you can see the house right so it's so cool all right we have a northwest pass that should bring us to all right so he cast uh 
What's the name of that spell? Fluster. He cast Fluster on me. Turns out you have to put the commands in backwards because the way it sends destruction in Japan, it's backwards like manga. So, mailbox opener. Yeah. Zork 2, the most entertaining game ever. What's up, Zash? Zash, I saw you pass the fuck out. Do you, why do you pass out on the stream, bro? Just go to bed. <laughs> You're sitting there just like... <laughs> listening to, to like metal concerts. I was like, I God, I want to be you when I grow up. Oh, Ferment, my bad. All right, well, we got to wait. We got to wait. And we got to wait. All right, so we're good now. We're going to save. Uh, this is going to be Zork 2-4. You're in a circular room with a low ceiling. Yeah, this is the low room, right? Circular room with low ceiling. There are exits to the east and southeast. Southeast is where we came from. Uh, there's a green piece of paper here, and there's a robot. This is the important thing, right? So we're going to tell that robot to go east. Robot leaves the room. He's going to whiz right up. And we're going to go east, and this is the machine room. All right? This is a large room full of escorted, assorted heavy machinery, whirring noisily. The room smells of burn resistors. Along one wall, there are three buttons, which are respectively round, triangular, and square. Naturally, above these uh, buttons are instructions written in E, B, C, D, I, C. A normal sign in English above all the buttons says, Danger, high voltage. Now, we could mess around with the buttons. And we could push the circular button. Uh, push round button then you die right Psst. the score is just it's basically just how many how many things you do like how many decisions you've made correctly uh, if we push the square button we also die but but if we push the triangular button it turns off the carousel so we're gonna restore Zork 24 and we're going to press triangular button. Actually, no, I'm not supposed to. It's the robot that does. Tell robot push triangular button. Oh, fuck, dude. I don't want to do that. Tell robot push triangular. There we go. So dull thump is heard in the, the distance. That is essentially the the carousel being shut down, which we like. All right. Exits west to the south. West will bring us back there. South should bring us to a closet, right? This is a dingy closet adjacent to a large room in the north. Chiseled in the wall are these words, protected by Froboz. Froboz is the name of the wizard that's trying to fuck us up. Magic alarm company. Hello, footpad. There doesn't seem to be any footpad here. However, there's a beautiful red crystal sphere here. So we're going to restore. We're going to tell the robot to go there. Say, tell robot, go south. There he goes. And then we're going to go south ourselves, And we're in the dingy closet. All right, if anybody wants to see the map so far that we've done, it's stupid. It's very rudimentary, but it works. And this whole page is going to be filled out with just shit, right? <clears throat> Being black and gifted. <laughs> nice. Okay, uh, do 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 do. So when we grab this sphere, a cage is going to drop on us. That's why we want the robot here. So we're going to take the sphere. As you reach for the sphere, a solid steel cage falls from the ceiling to trap you. To make matters worse, poisonous gas starts coming in the room. So we're going to tell Robot, lift the cage. Alright, now we're going to get the red sphere. And then we are going to go north. Boop. So now we're back in the machine room. To the low room. You know, your compass starts spinning wildly. What compass, you say? The one that allows you to specify compass directions for movement. Oh, no. 
Oh, I forgot about this. Oh, no. Okay. So you know how the compass room, or the carousel spins? When we turn it off, all of the shit goes into the low room. <clears throat> Assholes. Assholes. Alright, so we want to go back to the tea room, because it's the only way out of here. So, southeast. Nope. All right, there we go. We need to try to do this. Uh... Oh, restore Zork 25. <laughs> That's what we want. All right. <laughs> Okay, so now we're going to head back to where we were. We're trying to get back to the carousel room now that we're here. So we need to go west to the, cir the top of the well, right? And then we need to get in bucket, take the water, go down, right? So we're in the circular room. Get out of bucket drop teapot because the only purpose of it was for this and then uh, go west here we can take the necklace and we're gonna save before the wizard comes and fucks us up all right pearl room directly to the west is the riddle room but because we're in the pearl room we can go no northwest into the carousel room, which don't work so good now. Okay, so we got all of our stuff. You're in a large circular room with high ceiling is lost in gloom. Eight identical passages leave the room. There's a matchbook saying... <coughs> Visit Zork 1 here. So is that the same matchbook that says the uh, FD3 or FDS3? There's a placemat here, an elvish sword of great antiquity is here, there's a newspaper here, there's a letter opener here, and there's a dented steel box here. Let's open up the box. Opening the steel box reveals a fancy violin. We don't want that yet, so we're going to drop the sphere, we're going to drop the necklace. It is absolutely random, yeah. He's actively moving around. There's been research, a lot of research done to the AI of the wizard. And it's incredibly difficult to even predict where he's going to be. It's very efficient how they coded it. I mean, I, I, I'm pretty sure there's, if I remember right, there are certain things that we can do. Uh, take the placemat and take the necklace. Wasn't Zork one in Call of Duty or something? I think it was Call of Duty, um... Was it Black Ops? I think there's something you can, like, hit the triggers and you break out of your seat and you go to the computer and play Zork. It wouldn't be very efficient to play it there. Alright, so we're in the carousel room. We've gotten the pearl necklace, the placemat, the sword, and our lamp. And we dropped the candies, the sphere, and the necklace, right? I don't need the necklace. No, drop the necklace. We don't need the necklace. This necklace isn't going to come into play until later. Alright, head north. Marble something another, right? Yeah. This is an arch hall of fine marble. The hall stops abruptly to the north at a ford across the stream. Please. My pen's going out. What a time to be alive, bro. I've had this pen for years. This is monumental. 
Don't you fail me now. All right, carousel room. This is the marble hall. And there's a ford across the stream where the marble is cracked and broken. Perhaps the flood or collapse of the cave was responsible. To the south, the hall opens into a large room. That is our carousel room. There's a rather annoying whirring sound coming from that room. There's a square brick here which feels like clay. Yeah, let's take that brick. Got the brick. North. The deep ford. Deep ford. You're fording the stream of the deep, but not impossible spot. The water is very cold. The walls of the ravine rise to the east and west, so that means we cannot go anywhere east or west. There's a small ledge along the north wall to the ravine. To the south is the entrance to a well-constructed but somewhat ruined hall. And we don't care about the stream in the middle. It's not going to play a big role. North again. Ledge in ravine. You're on a narrow ledge near the bottom of a deep ravine. The ledge continues to the west. Yes, it does. Ledge of ravine. A precarious climb up to another tiny ledge is possible. A short scramble down the rock face leads to a stream. So this is our first option for up and down. Uh, do, 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 do. But now we're going to go up. Tiny room. This is a tiny room carved out of the wall of the ravine. There is an exit down a precarious climb. On the north side of the room is a massive wooden door which has a small window barred with iron. A formidable lock, bolt lock, is set within a door frame. A keyhole covered by a thin metal lid lies within the lock. Okay. So if we go up, we go to the tiny room. Now here's the good thing. We're going to basically be stealing a key, right? So we've got the letter opener and we got a placemat. And if you've ever played any game where you have to knock a key out of a locked door, you slide the placemat under, you take your letter opener and you pop it through the hole and it falls on the placemat and you pull it back through. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to slide the mat under the door. Cool. Now we're going to move the lid. We're going to insert the letter opener. Insert letter opener into keyhole insert letter opener into keyhole oh did I forget to grab the letter opener this is live 42 or 1084 respond that raid alarm from Trunton what's up dude What is up, Trunton? How are you? What are you up to? Can we get a shout out for Trunton? Trunton, do you actually stream? I've been curious, because I try to watch. I don't I don't see you going live. You play you need to play some Pokemon Go on that toilet though. Get hit up hit up some uh <laughs> some pokey stops. That's one of the coolest things I, I loved about living in Alaska, right? Is that the church that was obnoxious all the time was a pokey stop so people would just go to that like obnoxious church and walk around and they'd lose their fucking mind and there's not nothing you could do because it was it was a public road right didn't have to go to jail i am glad to hear that that makes me happy all right so while that raid was happening i loaded my last save and uh i got all the items that i needed so we're going to slide placemat under door open the lid Put letter opener in keyhole, right? There's a faint noise from behind the door and a small cloud of dust rises up from underneath it. Cool, we're gonna pull the mat. Yep, that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take the key. Take key. Unlock door with key. Keyhole is blocked. Oh, take letter opener. 
My bad. Stupid. <laughs> Insert key. Uh, keyhole. Unlock door. Key. Sweet. I see. So if depending on how you use the parser, sometimes it'll grab the item for you. Sometimes it won't. Okay. Uh, let's see. We're gonna save before I go in that room because I don't remember what it what's in there. Twenty seven east. Or no, it's north, isn't it? Dreary room. It's some damn good music, isn't it, Moo, for this? This is a small and rather dreary room. Eerily illuminated by a red glow em emanating from a crack in one wall, the light falls upon a dusty wooden table in the center of the room. On the south side of the room is a massive wooden door which has a small window barred with iron. A formidable bolt lock is set within the door frame. A keyhole lies within the lock. Uh, in the center of the table sits a blue crystal sphere. All right, so we're going to, we don't need what we have in our inventory. Rusty iron key, letter opener, brick, sword, and lamp. We don't need the key. Drop the key. And we're going to drop the letter opener. Take the sphere. Cool, so we got the red and the blue sphere. Wish I had scotch to unwind and chill with you for it. I love scotch so much. Blue. What's your scotch of choice? I like Lagavulin, and I know that that's very, like, stupid, overrated, right? But, see, so I can't do 12s unless they're Glenlivet. Glenlivet is the only 12 i found that, you know, mainstream scotch that I can tolerate. I like Lagavulin, but it's very expensive, and it's very peaty, which, for anybody who doesn't know, like, scotch, good scotch whiskey, has a, has, like, the peats from the peat bogs of fucking, you know, Scotland, right? And uh, Lagavulin's good, but it's like my special, special thing, right? I don't, I don't just chug that shit. Uh, Glenlivet 12 is fantastic. I'm not a big fan of anything Johnny Walker puts out. I've had Johnny Walker Blue all the time, right? I don't find it to be anything special. I really don't. But again, I'm not a Scotch snob, right? I'm not an alcohol snob. If it gets me fucked up, it gets me fucked up. <laughs> Dwar's White Label, I. What's your take on Johnny Blue? Because I I much prefer... What was it? It's not green or red. Red is like... Ugh. Double black was like... Ugh. Like double... Ugh. I'm trying to remember. What's the one below blue? That's the one that I would, I would get quite often. Don't get double black. That's horrible. It's trash. <laughs> yeah, black is like... It's like... Oh, man. I just pour some liquid smoke in there. We got the blue sphere, so we're going to go south in the tiny room. And then we're going to uh, go back down the ledge. So we're back in the ledge. Now we're going to be mixing it up with some dragons, right? <clears throat> blue is above my grad school pay. I, I had a thing of blue for a long time. It just wasn't for me. All right, so we're going to go west. The west marks the end of the ledge. End of ledge. It's in our inventory right now. So I just have the blue sphere. I wonder if I need to go back and get the red sphere. Because I know I put it down. Let's go fuck with the dragon. There it is. Dragon room! Now there's a few things that we can do in here to to literally ruin our 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 day <laughs> and we're gonna do them just for the laughs the room is a large cavern full of broken stone the walls are scorched and there are deep scratches on the floor a sooty dry smell is very strong here a paved path winds from a large passage to the west through the room and across a huge stone bridge to the south to the east a small crack is visible a dark and smoky tunnel leads north a huge red dragon is laying here blocking entrance to a tunnel leading north smoke curls from his nostrils now between his teeth your sword has begun to glow very brightly yeah because this is a huge threat all right we're gonna save because we're gonna mess we're gonna mess with this dragon just for the lulls hit 
hit Dragon with sword. You made him rather angry. You better be very careful now. Dragon continues to watch you carefully. Hit Dragon. Hit Dragon. <laughs> He's gonna kill us with his sword. Boom! We're dead! There it is. We're dead. We're dead. And guess what? When we walk around, Room of the White Mist. We don't want to be here. This is not good. This is not good. We don't want to be here. This is work 28. Uh, do, 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 do. So here's the thing I actually need to hit him with the sword. Let's talk to the dragon. Speak. Say to dragon, go away. Oh man, tell dragon, fuck you. Dragon looks amused. He speaks in a voice so deep you feel it rather than hear it, but the tongue is unknown to you. You find yourself almost hypnotized. <laughs> tell dragon, blow me. Jump on dragon. Ever had Kraken rum? Yes. I love Kraken. Kraken is delicious. Alright, here we go. We're going to restore. There's a few things we need to do. We need him to follow us. There's an ice room to the west. So, yeah. Okay. No, 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 no. Restore Zork 28. Alright, hit dragon with sword. We're going to go south. So he follows us, right? North. Alright, he killed us. I think we need to go south, not north. Okay, yeah, I, I fucked up. It's south. He's gonna follow us, so hit dragon with sword. South. Hit dragon with sword. Uh, then we go south again. The cool room. Hit dragon with sword. And we go south. We go west. There we go. <clears throat> Ask Dragon to poop. Can't do that. He's dead now. Well, he's not dead. He's just fucked off. So, we need to mark our rooms. So, the Dragon Room, Endo Ledge. We have the... Was it the Cool Room? Or the Stone Room. Right? And then we have the Cool Room. And then we have the Ice Room. And the Ice Room is where we went to the west. Sweet. This is Zork 2. This is one of the first games from Infocom, specifically the second one that they ever made. This is a large hall of ancient lava since worn smooth by the movement of a glacier. A large passage exits to the east and an upward lava tube is at the top of a jumble of fallen rocks. A mass of ice fills the western half of the room. As the dragon enters, he sees his reflection on the icy surface of the glacier in its western end. He becomes enraged. There is another dragon here, behind that glass. He thinks. Dragons are smart, but sometimes naive. And this one has never seen ice before. He rears up to his full height to challenge his intruder into his territory. He roars a challenge. The intruder responds. The dragon takes a deep breath and out of his mouth pours a massive gout of flame. It washes over the ice, which melts rapidly, sending out torrents of water and a huge cloud of steam. You manage to clamber up the small shelf, but the dragon is terrified. A huge splash goes down his throat. There is a muffled explosion in the dragon, a puzzled expression on his face. He dies. He is carried away by the water. When the flood recedes, you climb gingerly down. While no trace of the dragon can be found, the melting of the ice has revealed a passage leading west. Your sword is no longer growing. Alright, so we do have a passage to the west. You don't need the sword anymore, though. Drop the sword. We're going to go east to the cool room, yep. Yeah. And from this point, we're going to save, because that could go horribly wrong or horribly right anytime. So, Zork 29. East. Can't go east. Okay. So, cool room. Can't go east. Let's go southeast. Oh, fuck that. I don't want that. Northwest. Cool room. Yeah. Sweet. Just melt the cool room, bro. 
Yeah, splash. The fuck? <laughs> and I'm mapping all of this out, Link. You know, see my map? It's very rudimentary, but it does the job. We're mapping all of this out. Look at that. <laughs> I love it. Gotta map it. Alright, so in the cool room, we're in the ice room. The ice room, I think, is what, what we care about right now. Uh, do, 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 do. All right, west is the lava room. I don't need to go here yet. Brings out the I actually join the map drawing and text really brings out creativity and you got to you got to think outside the box. Uh southeast carousel room, east southeast. All right, so All right, so west is room 8. We don't need to be here yet. So we're going to go east, southwest, cobwebby corridor, I think is where we want to go now. Uh, to do cobwebby corridor. We're going to restore because that's going to be my objective. I don't remember if the lamp dampens like it does in this one. So southeast, southwest. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, modern games and graphics have ruined creativity because what's the point now? Think about this. You're creating worlds with words. <clears throat> worlds with words. And that's all that they could do. Back in the day, this would have been on the Apple II. Or the TRS-80. Or the Commodore VIC-20, right? They, they were very rudimentary ways of giving people adventures. This is back before, you know, Sierra was doing their high-res adventures. I think the closest thing they had to it was, what, soft porn? Soft porn adventure? Stupid. Alright, a winding corridor is filled with cobwebs. Some are broken and the dust on the floor is disturbed. The trend of the twists and turns is northeast, which brings us to the, the carousel room. Uh, and southwest. Northeast to southwest. So we can go southwest here. We don't need to right now, but we will. On the north side of one twist high up is a narrow crack. There's a coil of black braided string. We're going to take that string. Alright, there's nothing special about it. Zork 29. Sweet. Okay, uh, we're going to go northeast. We're going to take the newspaper. Take... The matches, northwest, west, west, in the lava room. Cool. Do do do. This is a small room whose walls are formed by an old lava floor. There are exits here to the east and to the south. Good to know. There on the floor lies a Moby Ruby. We don't want that Ruby. That Ruby is not going to help us right now. We'll come back for it later. Uh, do 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 do. Uh, south. You're at the bottom of a large dormant volcano. High above you, light enters from the cone of the volcano. The only exit is to the north. Yep. So this is the volcano bottom. Volcano bottom. Role-playing games are dead because of lack of choice. This is true. And by the way, I have beaten this game before, so I know what I'm doing. However, every other Infocom game ever, I'm not going to know what I'm doing. So we're not going to be able to beat it in one sitting like we will Zork 1, 2, 3, uh... It's going to be interesting, because I'm going to get my ass kicked. I'm going to get my ass handed to me, and uh, it's going to bring Moo eternal love. And, you know, I've never even played Hitchhikers. I've never played Hitchhikers. And I've heard that Hitchhikers can be a really mean game, too. Like, there's some fucking moon logic. Some horrible moon logic <laughs> that if you're not, if you're not expecting it, you're going to get, you're going to get hammered, right? in a Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. All right, you're at the bottom of a large dormant volcano. High above your uh, light enters from the cone of the volcano. The only exit is to the north, which is the uh, lava room. There's a large and extremely heavy wicker basket here. An enormous cloth bag is draped over the side and firmly attached to the basket. A metal receptacle is fastened to the center of the basket. Dangling from the basket is a piece of braided wire. All right, so we're going to get into the basket. Get into basket, right? Uh, b -b 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 uh, shit. Knocked over my mouse. 
get into the basket. Now we want to open the receptacle. And we're going to put the newspaper in there. Light a match. Alright. Burn the... Oh, my bad. Light the newspaper with a match. Newspaper burns inside the receptacle. The cloth bag inflates as it fills with hot air. A small label drops from the bag into the basket. The match has gone out. Now, we're in a hot air balloon, for anybody who doesn't know. We're in a hot air balloon. The game doesn't describe it very well, but we're in a hot air balloon. So that being said, we don't want to close the receptacle, because we've only got one newspaper. <laughs> so we're going to save. Show you what that looks like. Zork. Zork 30. Close receptacle. And now, we can't do anything. This is a soft lock. Restore Zork 30. Now you know, right? Uh, and uh, we're going to just let it take us places. We're going back to the narrow ledge. There's tons of soft locks. You're about 100 feet above the bottom of the volcano. The top of the volcano is clearly visible here. The cloth bag is inflated, and there is a newspaper burning in the receptacle. A braided wire is dangling over the side of the basket. The basket contains a blue label. We don't want any of this shit. We don't care about the labels. Uh, we can look at the label, though. Hello, aviator. To land your balloon, say land. Otherwise, you're on your own. No warranty expressed or implied. Coolest wait. Volcano near small ledge in a basket. You're about 200 feet above the volcano floor. Looming above is the rim of the volcano. There's a small ledge on the west side. Cloth bag is inflated and there's a newspaper burning in the receptacle. Braided wire. I don't remember if it's the narrow ledge or the small ledge. So we're going to save. Uh, you are high above the volcano. The rim of the volcano looks very narrow and you are very near it. To the east is what appears to be a viewing ledge. Too thin to land on. Cloth bag is inflated and there is a newspaper burning in the receptacle. A braided wire is dangling over the side. We're going to wait again. Volcano near wide edge in the basket. You're near the rim of the volcano. Above you is open to sky. To the west there is a place to land on the wide ledge. Cloth bag is inflated and there is a newspaper burning in the receptacle. Braided wire. Nope. We're going to wait again. I think we want the near... Oh. I died. <laughs> I did use DOS growing up, but I wasn't very efficient at it. Swing the sword. I don't think I have the sword on me right now. Yeah, I don't have the sword on me. Is it the small edge? We would know because there's a library next to it. Oh. All right, we want to tie a balloon with string. Tie the wire to the... So it was this one. I thought it was the narrow one. Can you commit se seppuku with a sword? You can kill yourself, yeah. If you really, really wanted to. <clears throat> All right, cloth bags inflated. There's newspaper burning in the receptacle. Braided wires dangling over the side of the basket. On the floor is a priceless gold zork made a valuable collector's item. Small hook attached to the rock here outside the basket. So, uh, we could take that if we wanted to, which we are. Take the coin. Take and the wizard appears. Fuck you! Leave me alone! Oh, am I in the basket? Okay, good. That could have gone a lot worse. Because usually when they fear you, you just run, right? I think personally you should spawn in an army of the IRS. No mythical monsters can evade taxes. This is true. Alright, look. The library. Okay, so we were in the thing. We went up to the narrow ledge. This is where mapping this is going to get incredibly different. Because we don't know how many levels... I'm continuing with, and my pen is dead. Fuck. Alright, we're going pencil. Uh, narrow ledge. We 
library. This must have been a large library, probably for the royal family. All of the shelves have been gnawed to pieces by unfriendly gnomes. To the north is an exit. Yep, north brings us to the narrow ledge. A handsome book bound in green leather sits on the, um... <clears throat> yeah, that's fine if you have that ability. Uh, Lying in the Dust and Covered with Mold is a purple book. Well, the purple book's what we care about, but just for shits and gigs, let's look at the other books. Take Blue Book. Open Blue Book. Read Blue Book. Yeah, so it's, it's useless. Restore Zork 31. Take White Book. Open White Book. Read White Book. Yeah. It's written in an unfamiliar tongue and details the use of various magical objects, chiefly the so-called magic wand. Apparently, these devices work by pointing them at the object to the ensorcelled and chanting the appropriate magic words. Truly amazing how credulous these ancients were, weren't they? Yeah, but we want the purple one. Why? Because there's a stamp inside. Take the stamp. Cool. Draw a book. So, for anybody who doesn't know, the Flatheads are like a, a a royal house in the universe of Zork. And they all have flat heads. They look stupid as shit. They're dumb. Klaatu, Barada, Nikto, right? We could try saying that. I don't think it would work. Klaatu, Barada, Nikto. What the fuck? They didn't even do anything. Restore. Oh, it's saved as that. Oh, shit. Fuck that. <laughs> That's horrible. Okay, save as not fucking that. No. Z my system, no! Zork, uh... 21. This could be Zork 21. <laughs> okay, look, where are we at? I don't think we need to mess with any of the other books. Uh, north. Get in basket. And then we're going to untie rope. The wire falls off the hook. Oh no! Alright, time to get to the wide ledge. Cloth bag is uh, inflated in the receptacle. A braid of wire is dangling over the side of the basket. And you suddenly decide that the wizard isn't that terrifying. He's really not. Volcano by viewing ledge. Wide ledge. We're going to land. Now we're going to tie the wire to the hook. All right, so now we got to wait. Oh, I don't know if I can wait. I think he's going to kill me. Yeah. Asshole. Bag. Uh, there it is. There we go. Exit basket south. Dusty room. Okay. Oh, you think this game should have colored room names? If only, right? If only. All right. So by going up a little bit more. <clears throat> We have the viewing ledge, but we can't stop on the viewing ledge, so we're going to keep going up. And this is the with the wide ledge, which is what we got off of. 
And then we went... South. To the dusty room. The dusty room. Uh, you're in the dusty old room which is featureless except for an exit on the north side which leads us to the wide ledge. Embedded in the far wall is a rusty box. It appears to be somewhat damaged as an oblong hole has been chipped out of it in front of it. So, uh, this is going to be shocking. And when I first played this, I was fucking mind blown that the brick that we found was not in fact just a brick, but a plastic explosive. C4 if you will. So what we're going to do is we're going to put the string in brick. Then we're going to put the brick in hole. Yep. We're going to light a match. Light the string. And then immediately go north. <laughs> Right, there's a large uh, piece of wire that holds Okay, the string rapidly burns into nothingness. Are we waiting for it to boom? It's supposed to explode. That's not how that's supposed to be. It's supposed to go boom. Uh, put string in brick. Done. Put brick in hole. Done. Light match. Light string with match. String starts to burn. Alright, there we go. Boom. There's a large and uh, extremely heavy wicker basket here. An enormous cloth bag. We already know about this. There's an explosion nearby. So if we stay there, that C4 will kill us, right? It will 100% kill us. And we can go south. You're in a dusty old room, which is featureless. The room is cl cluttered with debris from an explosion. The wall seems ready to collapse. Successfully, Gaudy Crown Lord Dimwit Flathead is here, but from that thing. Box contains a card. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the crown. Uh, I don't think we need the card, but we'll take it anyway. This room is constructed over a very poor rock strata. Detonation explosive is strictly prohibited. <laughs> it sometimes it's fun just to see how many de creative ways you can die in these games. Alright. Insert string into brick. Done. Put brick in hole. Light match. Light string with match. North. Alright, south. Take the crown. We don't want to stay here, so we're going to go back to the ledge, which is here. And we're going to get into the basket. Untie rope. And then, uh, do, 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 close receptacle. We're going all the way back down. We're going to wait. Sweet. Cool. So now that we're there, we're going to go all the way back down to the bottom, and we're going to go check out some of the other ones for the, uh, got a dud C4? No, no, it worked fine. Volcano bottom. We're going to go north. We're going to actually, okay, exit basket north. Take the ruby, because we care about that now. Uh, east, elvish sword. We don't care about that right now. East, the cool room. Southeast, the carousel room. Save. Sort 24. All right, I'm going to take a quick break. Don't go anywhere. I'll be right back. A long time ago, I was asked to do a 10 best Nintendo 64 sports games episode, and I was excited. Almost two months later, <laughs> I'm exhausted. This was actually something that was heavily requested, and it did take me a lot of time to play them all just for the purposes of this video. You know what I'm saying? But the more and more I looked into the Nintendo 64 library, the more I realized that the system was kind of lazy. 64 bits didn't really mean more power to me in the long run. But sports games are always a novelty and appeals to a certain demographic, and that's the topic of today's episode, my top 10 Nintendo 64 sports games. Now I will say after checking out 86 of these fuckers over the course of almost three months, I've learned a few things. Number one, if the game was made by Midway, it was probably an arcade conversion. 
If it was made by EA or Konami, it was likely decent. If it was made by Acclaim, it was a fucking mistake. Number two, if the game had a two number system in the title like 98 or 99, it's probably hot unfiltered dust beneath the linoleum that's crusted over and been there since the Jurassic era donkey shit. But if it's got four numbers, like 2000 or 2001, it's probably fine. Let's use it in a sentence. Hey man, I got bullshit 98 for the Nintendo 64 at home. Want to come over? Nah, man, bullshit 98 is horrible, but bullshit 2000, brother, that's a game. Number three, the two sports that seemed to somewhat figure it out were baseball and soccer. That being said, let's go ahead and talk about my top 10 sports games on the Nintendo 64. Let's begin. Let's start us off with a snowboarding game and a good one at that. Snowboard Kids 1, to me, was rather stiff, much like most snowboarding games of the era, such as 1080 and Twisted Edge, and also Big Mountain 2000, which fucking sucks, by the way. Don't play that game. Snowboard Kids 2 polished it fairly well. I enjoyed it. The game was developed by Rackdim, which you likely haven't heard of unless you played Snowboard Kids, but they did a lot prior to 1997 that mattered, namely Far East of Eden. Kabuki Clash, which I remember seeing in the arcades. I didn't play it, but I knew of it. Snowboard Kids 2 has a story mode, battle races, and even games of skill, and it's a fun game that you should check out. The series did continue on the Nintendo DS, but one thing I've noticed throughout time is that the handheld platforms are the Florida of the gaming industry. Franchises go there to die, and that's what happened to Snowboard Kids. This is a game I wanted to play my whole life, and I always selected some other game from Blockbuster, be it something Star Wars, or Mystical Ninja, or even Star Fox 64, and then one summer, Blockbuster was gone. Playing it as an adult and comparing it to other golfing games on the system, this is perhaps the best golf game hands down, but in reality, the competition really wasn't there. I mean, we had PGA European Tour, which was hot garbage, and YLI Country Club, which was equally fucked, so yeah, check out Mario Golf. Much like most Mario sports games, we have a wide selection of characters, and the mechanics are approachable and accurate to the sport, which I did enjoy. There aren't any complex controls, you could just, fuck, play golf with Mario, Luigi, you name it. This franchise is still going strong. The most recent Mario Golf title was Mario Golf Super Rush, developed by the same folks who made Golden Sun, Camelot Software Planning. <laughs> If we look at the library for the Nintendo 64, there are at least 12 games that are football, and for the Madden series, it started getting decent around Madden NFL 99, which wasn't great, but it was a step in the right direction. 2000 was great, but 2001 is a streamlined experience on the Nintendo 64, and I enjoy that, I truly do. One of the chief concerns of football games of the era for me boiled down to two things, camera and controls. Some games could not figure out the camera to save their lives, and some would make it impossible to know where the ball was going to land, and those two in combination were the reason why I judged so many American football games poorly. They simply weren't fun. Here's looking at you, quarterback club. Yeah, you sassy bitch. Madden obviously still thrives to this day, and as someone who worked the QA on two of them, 2011 and 2012 respectively, they aren't going anywhere anytime soon. One thing I can say about Midway is that they did a really good job of bringing their arcade games to the Nintendo 64 and other consoles as well. Blitz is an arcade game, and the three releases, they're all basically the same. Just good, clean, fun, in-your-face, subpar football with aggressive undertones that is a wonderful time waster. Throughout time, the only big changes that were involved with them were the inclusion of instant replays in some mini-games, specifically in NFL Blitz 2001 or Special Edition. This game is also stupid fun with your friends, and I do suggest that you check it out. This series unfortunately died with the edgy 2005 and 2008 releases of Blitz the League, which let you smoke crack and break people in half and shit, and even though they tried to return to their roots in 2012, the franchise was so irrelevant that even those who remember playing it turned their back on EA.
Whether you call it soccer or football, you're going to call it fun if you play FIFA 99. It's a damn good game. Soccer on the Nintendo 64 was represented fairly well, seven games in total that I saw, and a majority of them weren't bad. Except for Konami. Konami has no clue how soccer works. I think they think people run around aimlessly for 90 minutes, occasionally kicking like those Indian and Pakistani guards during the gate closing ceremony. Seriously. Fuck International Superstar Soccer. That game blows. FIFA 99 though? Yeah, that's the one to play. The controls are intuitive, not complicated, and it's a great time waster. It's really responsive, which is something that was rather lacking on the Nintendo 64 when it came to programming sports. 99 also has the European Dream League, which is a 20-team tournament, and that's what I did. Much like all of EA's flagship sports franchises, FIFA isn't going anywhere anytime soon. This is another EA game, but Software Creations worked on the Nintendo 64 version. Yeah, that's Software Creations. Tim Fallen, Software Creation. Wolverine, Solstice, Plock, Igena's Prophecy. <laughs> they went pretty far down the rabbit hole until Acclaim scooped them up in 2002, but they would die out two years after that, so yeah. World Cup 98 is important though because it marks the first game that EA created from the original line of World Cup titles. Prior to that, US Gold did a majority of the publishing, so from 98 onwards, it would be under EA's control. World Cup is a good time, and unlike FIFA, it would be released in conjunction with the World Cup, so there's plenty of time to bend out the kinks and bugs in the game, so we get a polished product that is on par, but slightly better than FIFA 99, although they do tend to play differently and obviously focus on different aspects of the sport. World Cup focuses on the World Cup, FIFA focuses on the rest, and you can expect to see more of this franchise with every single World Cup until we die. There aren't that many tennis games that I played. Ubisoft tried with All-Star Tennis 99, which was a very generic experience, and that left Mario Tennis. Much like Mario Golf, it's the baseline sport with fun little changes, extra mini-games, and a fair amount of replayability if you're someone who enjoys collecting things. Personally, I'm not, but my kids would love this game. One of the big reasons why this game should matter to folks that enjoy the Mario universe is that this is the game that introduced Waluigi and brought back Birdo and Daisy. I don't know if it was a soft release of the older characters to test public interest, but they did it. With Mario Tennis, we can do everything that other tennis games should have, such as lobs, smashes, and drop shots, and you can do up to seven different shots. It's incredibly fun, repetitive. All right, let's get back into this. Uh, do 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 do. <clears throat> All right, we're in the carousel room. What did we just do? Carousel room from the cool room. Okay. Yep, and we should have the ruby. Drop ruby. Drop crown. I don't need the crown. <laughs> drop the stamp. Drop zork mid. Drop matchbook. Drop sphere. Blue crystal sphere. I don't know where I put my red sphere. Okay. There's the ruby, but where's the red sphere? Where did I put the red sphere? Oh, that's not good. Okay, there it is. I was like, oh no! It doesn't matter now, but it will in a, it will in a second. All right, here we go. So we're gonna go northwest to the cool room. Do 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 do. Cool room brings us to the north, to the stone bridge. Uh, do 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 do. We can go west. Can't go west. Dragon room. Can we go west in the dragon room? Fresco room. Okay, cool. So we're about to get to the bank. Uh, do do do. From the dragon room. West. So the dragon protects the bank. This is the fresco room. Fuck, man. My pen. I hate it when pins die. They irritate me. Alright, west. To the fresco room. Path leads east-west, so this is published by InfoWars. No, Infocom. Totally different experience. Not not Alex Jones. The guy who's making the frogs gay. No, none of those. Uh, it's hard to tell who's doing this. These parts of the fresco have been blackened and cracked by intense heat. Apparently pissed off by the dragon, so. Let's go west, and we should be in the, ba the bank entrance. Sweet. 
So the bank, for anybody who doesn't know, if you could visualize it, the, the bank splits into two different halls going up north. You've got two sides tellers, you've got west teller, east teller, west viewing, right viewing, and then two vaults in the back. So This is the Great Entrance Hall of the Bank of Zork, the largest banking institution of the Great Underground Empire, a practical account of its history in the, the lives of the 12 Flatheads. In the chapter on J. Piermont, or Pierpont Flathead, a more detailed history, albeit less objective, may be found in Flathead's outrageous autobiography, I'm Rich and You Aren't. So there! Most of the furniture has been ravaged by passing scavengers. All that remains are two signs of the northwest northeast corners of the room, which say viewing rooms. The way out, ornate but tasteful, is to the east. All right, so we're going to go northeast. This should bring us to the east viewing room, or the east teller. East Teller. And for shits and gigs, because I know because I've done it before, West Teller's there. It's a small room, which is once used by a bank officer who retrieves safety deposit boxes for the customer. On the north side of the room is a sign which reads Viewing Room. On the east side of the room, above an open door, is a sign reading Bank Personnel Only. Cool. Fuck them. East. East Teller's Room. Uh, east Viewing Room. And the west viewing room. This is a large rectangular room, but east and west walls were used for storing safety deposit boxes, but all have been carefully removed by evil persons. To the east, west, and south of the room are large doorways. The northern wall of the room is shimmering curtain of light, and the center of the room is a large stone cube. We're not going to mess with that. Engraved on the side of the cube with some lettering on the ground is a small worn piece of paper. <clears throat> Gringotts? You think it's Gringotts? Stupid. Uh, do, 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 this room is the office of the chairman of the Bank of Zork. Like the other rooms here, it has been extensively vandalized. The lone exit is to the north. A portrait of J. Pierpont Flathead hangs on the wall. We're going to take the portrait. Take the portrait. And then, uh... Look to the right. Look. Uh, do 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 all right, safety deposit in the ground is a small one piece of paper. We don't care about that. Enter the light. Shimmering curtain of light or the lamp. The curtain. Enter curtain of light. Enter shimmering curtain of light. All right, so by going there, we have the small room. Small bare room with no distinguished features. There are no exits from this room. Right? But it's a secret because we can enter the south wall. You feel somewhat disoriented as you pass through. And the ground is a small worn piece of paper. Yep. Enter light. Enter shimmering curtain of light. There we go. So it's reading the, the portrait that we're carrying and it thinks that we're the bank director. That's what's going on right now. This is the vault of the Bank of Zork in which there are no doors. On the floor sit 200 neatly stacked Zork mid bills. We're going to take them. Take bills. To north wall. The ground is a small worn piece of paper. We don't care about that at all. We're going to drop the bills. Uh, drop the portrait. Drop portrait because we don't need it anymore. East Teller's room, yep. Safety depository. On the ground is a small one piece of paper. Yeah. We're going east and we're going east again. Uh take the bills. Take portrait. Enter shimmering curtain of light. Feel so much sorry to pass through East Viewing Room. This room was used by the Holder Safety Deposit Box. Yeah, this is how we teleport. It's stupid. Enter the damn curtain. I know. That's what I'm trying to do. South Bank Entrance. Sweet. All right. 
<sighs> Bankers of Flatheads can't help but think of screwdrivers. I, they're assholes. The, so, you don't really run into many NPCs in this game outside of the fact that they're trying to kill you. Which, in the case of Zork 2, we have the wizard. In Zork 1, we have the thief. Uh, other enemies include Cyclops. At some point, we're gonna we're gonna run into Cerberus here because for some weird reason, Zork is the has a pathway to hell in every single game. It's very silly. The third game, however, is only in a dungeon, which is very interesting to me. Um, let's see. We're in the bank entrance, so we're gonna go east to the fresco room, dragon room. We're gonna go north, and this is the dragon's lair, right? You're in a dragon's lair where the rock walls are scarred by flame. A blackened doorway leads to the south. So if we go to the dragon's room, we go up one more. And this is the dragon's lair. Uh, a rotten old wooden chest is in one corner among the debris. Debris, a beautiful young woman wearing a dirty and bedragged gown, sits on a rock in the corner, hair is unkempt, and she's oblivious to your presence, almost in a trance. All right, we'll say hello to her. Hello, princess. I must address the beautiful princess directly. Say hello, princess, to princess. Shit, I haven't saved in a long time. Where am I at? Carousel room? This is all... Is this right before the bank? We gotta do all this again. Oh, thanks. Now I'm gonna beat it tonight. Uh, do, 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 do. So stupid. Alright, we just basically did everything I needed to do again, all over again. Uh, gotta go and enjoy the rest of the stream. You're doing quite well. Thanks, Moo. Again, this is this is like I played this so often because growing up I was poor, so PC software I really didn't have much. This was this is the game I played, and I was goofy about it. East, east, dragon rooms, north. So I gotta figure out how to talk to her. Say. I don't know how they want me to verb this. You must address the beautiful princess directly. Say, hello, princess to beautiful princess. Okay. Princess, for she's obviously one, shakes herself awake and notices you for the first time she smiles. Thank you for rescuing me from that horrid worm. She says, I must depart. My parents will be worried about me. With that, she rides looking purposely out of the lair. So we gotta wait until she leaves. 
Princess walks south. She glances back at you as she goes. South. East. East. Down. South. East. Wait. East. North. Mm-hmm. All right. Finally, the unicorn's here. Oh, Zork 26. All right. Shyly, a unicorn peeks out of the hedges. It notices the princess and seems captivated. It approaches her and bows, it bows its head as though courtesying to her. Around the neck is a red satin ribbon on which is strung a delicate gold key. The princess takes the ribbon and uses it to tie up her hair. She looks at you and then, smiling, hands you the key in fresh rose which she plucks from the arbor. You may have use of such a thing, she says. It is the least I can do for one who rescued me from a fate I dare not contemplate. With that, she mounts the unicorn, side saddle, of course, and rides off into the gloom. Okay, cool. We don't need the rose, so we're going to drop the rose. <laughs> Exit gazebo. All right, southwest and southwest, and we're in the carousel room again. Save. Zork. 27. Cool. Uh, let's check our inventory. We're going to drop the portrait. Drop the bills. And so all we should have is the delicate gold key and a lamp. Alright. This is coming up here. This is going to be a frustrating part of the game because the south corridor uh after the Minra room is pure fucking RNG. So south into the Minra room. Here we go. There's a large room which is evidently used once as a quarry. Many large limestone chunks lie helter-skelter around the room, some of rough hewn and unwork, others smooth and well finished. One side of the room appears to have been used to quarry building blocks, the other to produce many or standing stones. Obvious passages lead north and south, north to the carousel room, of course. The man here room. Uh, do, 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 do. One particularly large man here, at least 20 feet tall and 8 feet thick, is leaning against the wall blocking dark opening leading southwest. On this side of the man here is carved an ornate letter of F. Cool. This is going to suck. This is RNG. Alright, south of the stairway. So the, the name of the room is an oddly angled room. And it's done that way because it's a fucking horrible, dreadful maze. When you put mazes in here, this is where it kind of jumps the shark for me. I'm not a big fan of that. Never have been. Probably never will. But it's, uh, it's kind of out there for me. All right. Here we go. This is a room with oddly angled walls and passages in all directions. The, mall, the walls are made of some glassy substance. The marble stairway leads upwards. Alright, cool. So, for anybody who doesn't know, this is a baseball field. It's a baseball field. And uh, what we have to do is we have to run. We have to figure out where we start where the club is because that's home home plate. And we got to run the bases and go in each direction three times until a diamond shows up. It's so stupid. <laughs> <coughs> so stupid. 
Alright, down. Alright, so southeast. Dimly glowing. So it's going to be this northeast. Alright. Northwest. It's glowing brightly. Southwest. Glowing serenely. So let's do it again. Southeast. Then northeast. Then northwest. Then southwest. Then we'll do it again. Southeast. Northeast. Northwest. Southwest. this part flickering dimly okay This part so fucking much. This is the part that kind of pissed me off as a kid. All right down, east, east. Take club. All right. Southeast, northeast, northwest, southwest. All right. You hear a strange rusty squeal like going in the distance. So it's, it's solved. Now we got to exit here. So many things to do here. All right, down, east, take the club, southeast, northeast, northwest, and then southwest. There it is. Fuck's sake. Cerberus room. Thank God. Cerberus room. Okay. Uh, do, 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 do. So we don't want to go here yet because that dog will kill us. So we're going to go up. North, 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 north. I'm stupid. Uh, Zork 29, right? Okay, north. Up. North, north. Okay. We're gonna take red sphere. Take blue sphere. Take the candies. Yeah, we're going to keep all that. That should be good. So Cerberus, Cerberus room is going to be in game, so I'm going to mark a star there because that's where we got to go. But uh, let's see. Southwest, Cobwebby Corridor, Southwest again. The Guardian Room. This room is cobwebby and musty, but tracks in the dust and snow show that has visitors recently. 
At the south end of the room is a stained and battered but very strong looking door. Okay. Guarded room. Embedded in the door is a nasty looking lizard head with sharp teeth and beady eyes. The lizard is sniffing at you. That's fine. We're going to give the candies to him. Give candy to lizard. Guardian greedily wolfs down the candy, including the package. It seemed to enjoy the grasshoppers particularly. It becomes quiet and his eyes closed. There's no sleep. Yep. Oh, it's so it's so well written. Uh, unlock door with key. Door is now unlocked. Cool. Open door. Go south. So this is the wizard's workshop. This is where the guy fucking steals our shit. This is where we have to go to get it. So if we don't have those candies, we're fucked. Wizard's workshop. Okay, we're gonna go west. This is his workroom. Should have been the aquarium. South, then west. Okay, that's fine. Workshop. Workroom, so we'll go west again. There it is. Here, a dark hallway turns a corner. To the south is a dark room. To the east is a fitful light. Feeling in the northern half of the room is a huge aquarium. And it's got a baby sea serpent. Well, guess what we're going to do? We're going to throw the club at the aquarium. The wooden club shatters the glass wall of the aquarium, spilling out an impressive amount of sea salt water and wet sand. It also spills an extremely annoyed sea serpent and bites angrily at the wooden club. And then a you. He is having difficulty breathing, and he seems to hold you responsible for his current problem. Uh, he tries to slither across the stone floor towards you. Fortunately, he expires more inches away from biting off your foot. A clear crystal sphere sits amid the sand and broken glass in the bottom of the aquarium. Good. Now we're going to take it. Take the sphere. Taken. Cool. We're going to save. Uh, Zork 2-1. This is going to replace the old one because we're doing fine. Go east into the workroom. This room is larger workroom. A hall continues east and west, and a larger room lies to the south. There are many shelves and racks on the walls, but the wizard's workbench dominates the room. It's made of a dark, heavy wood bound with iron. The workbench is stained for many years of use and is deeply gouged as though some huge clawed animal was imprisoned on it. There are burn marks and even notes written in the crabbed hand. Many arcane items are scattered about the bench. Alembics, mortar and pestle, small knives of various sizes, old, odd scraps of vellum, wax candles, and much more. In the center of a relatively clear area of the bench are affixed three stands, ruby, sapphire, and diamond, which form a triangle. All right, here's what we're going to do. We're going to put put ruby on ruby stand. Put red sphere on red stand. Put sap... Put... I don't know how I would word this. Put... Red sphere on ruby stand. Thank you. Put blue sphere on sapphire stand. Put clear sphere on diamond stand. As you noise the as you place the crystal sphere in the diamond stand, a low humming noise begins. You can feel the hairs in the back of your neck begin to stand up. Three spheres begin to vibrate faster and faster as the noise becomes higher and higher pitched. Three puffs of smoke, one red, one blue, one white, rise up from empty stands. The spheres are gone, but in the center of the triangle formed by the stands is now a black stand of obsidian, which rests a strange black sphere. We're gonna take those spheres. We're gonna take the sphere, and we're gonna go into the satanic room. The pentagram room. Satan room. In this room inscribed on the floor, a great pentagram drawn with a black chalk. In the center is a black circle. You kind of think of what we need to do. Uh, do, 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 do. We're going to put the sphere on the circle, thus summoning a demon on the circle. Cold wind blows outward from the sphere. The candles flicker and a low moan, almost inaudible, is heard. It rises in volume and pitch until it becomes a high-pitched keening. A dim shape becomes visible in the air above the sphere. The shape revolves into a large and somewhat formidable-looking demon. He looks around, tests the walls of the pentagram experimentally, then sees you. 
Hmm, a new master. He says under his breath, Greetings, O oh, master, wouldst thou desire, desire a service, as our contract stateth? For some pittance of wealth, some trifle, I will gratify the desires to the utmost limit of my powers, and they are not inconsiderable. He makes a pass with his massive arms, and the walls begin to shake a little. Another pass, and the shaking stops. A nice effect. I find it makes for a better relationship to give such a demonstration early on. He grins virally. All right, so what we're gonna do? We're gonna give him. We're gonna give him a shit ton of treasures. All right, north, east, north, northeast, east, north, northeast. All right, take a uh, crown. Take ruby. Take necklace. Take Zork mid. I think those are all of the the treasures that I have. Uh, do, 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 do. Give crown to demon. Yep. Give ruby to demon. Give Zork mid to demon. Give ne necklace to demon. I don't know if I need the. We're gonna save just in case I mess up. I think the key is considered a treasure. Shit, he's here. Tell demon to I got to
pretty sure I have all of the... know what to all right I gotta look up how to <clears throat> how to talk to NPCs Zork to how to talk to NPCs There's a weird, strange thing. Zork to how to talk to NPCs. There we go. Can I just say, give me the one? Zork to manual. Hey, look at the manual for this. Basic sense is talking to characters in the story. This is what matters. Okay. Okay. I see. So there's a very specific way to do this, and it's stupid. So it involves saying, Demon, give me the wand. Fuck, man. But one treasure is not yet to be given. I don't know what treasure he's missing. Pretty sure I grabbed everything. All right, I gotta look this up because I, I, pretty sure I grabbed everything. Um, Zork. To map. Trunk, blue sphere, brochure, bills, portrait. We don't care about that. Does he want the sword? Oh, ruby, coin, books. Pearl necklace, he's already gotten the flask. Does he want the flask?
Okay, so the stamp, the crown. Yeah. Yeah. The golden dragon statuette. Okay, so where did I forget that at? Where's that at? The fucking statue, of course. I don't remember where the a fucking gold dragon statue was. It's in the dragon room? Oh, it's in the trunk in the fucking dragon's lair, isn't it? Hold on. No. East. North. East. North. North. Northeast. Northwest. Uh, we gotta figure out how to get back in the damn dragon's room. North. 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 Look. Open. Stupid. <laughs> okay, give statue to demon. Okay. Demon, give me the wand. Here it obey, says the demon. He stretches out an enormous hand towards the wand. The wizard is unsure what to do, pointing threateningly at the demon that you fudge, he cries. But aside from a strong order of chocolate in the air, there is no effect. The demon plucks the wand out of his hand. It's about toothpick size to him and gingerly lays it before you. He fades the smoke which disperses. The wizard runs from the room in terror. Yeah, because he's a fucking asshole. Stupid. Alright, so we're going back to the, the manier room. So, northeast. North, east, north, east, northeast. Right. South to the manier room. We're going to say float. Or we should. Wave the wand at manier. Did I forget to grab the wand? Fuck's sake! There we go. The one goes the uh, meteor floats majestic the air raised about ten feet. The passage between it goes in there. Sweet. Southwest. Now we're in the kennel. This room looks like it was once a kennel for a very large dog. It's Cerberus, by the way. Bones should fit a dinosaur. It apparently has been used for a long time, as the dust is fairly thick all over. The only exit is northeast. Gigantic dog collar, large enough for a nicer sized dog, is lying amongst the degrees. So what we're gonna do is so we're gonna take the collar. We're gonna go northeast. We're gonna go south. Down. Down. We're gonna save so we don't fuck this up zork 23 put collar on dog creature wind winds happily then the center head licks your face which is roughly like experiencing a sandpaper washcloth the other two heads look about as though the monster felt a sudden need to find a pair of slippers somewhere its huge tail wags enthusiastically knocking small rocks around and almost blowing you over from the breeze it creates cool yeah we're gonna go east and we're gonna start drawing again Alright, so this is the anteroom. Anteroom. The anteroom is large and empty. Marble bars or marble marble bass reliefs depict the stirring times and after laugh of the flight heads, the latter a bit optimistically. The X is up into the west. A large marble door stands to the south. Door is now closed above the door is a cryptic inscription. Feel free. Let's go south. Uh, sweet. So basically, um, what I was thinking. Thank you so much for that follow. I appreciate it. Oh fuck! I can't believe you've done this. <laughs> I try. All right, so I'm in the crypt.
All right, the room contains the earthy remains of the mighty flatheads, 12 somewhat flatheads mounted securely on poles. While the room might be expected to contain funerary urns or other evidence of the ritual practice of the ancient Zorkers, it is empty of all such objects. There is writing carved on the crypt. The only apparent exit is the north through the door. The inner room, the door is open. Turn off lamp. It is dark, but on the south wall is a faint outline of a rectangle, as though light were shining around a doorway. You can also make out a faintly glowing letter in the center of the area. It might be an F. Cool. Open the door. Open the secret door. And south. Game. Woo. What's up, Sam? Oh my goodness. Well, we beat it. Beyond the door is a roughly hewn staircase leading down in the darkness. The landing on which you stand is covered with carefully drawn magical runes like those sketched upon the workbench of the Wizard of Frobaz. These have been overlaid with sweeping green lines of enormous power which undulate back and forth across the landing. The wand begins to vibrate in harmony with the motion of the lines. You feel yourself compelled downward, and you yield, stepping onto the staircase. As you pass the green lines, they flare and they disappear with a burst of light, and you tumble down the staircase. At the bottom... A vast red-lit hall stretches off into the distance. Sinister statues guard the entrance to a dimly visible room far ahead. With courage and cunning... <clears throat> oh, thanks. Appreciate it. It's pretty good. It's pretty close. I, I could never get, like, a perfect score on any of these games. Here we go. There's jelly bean for you. That's rotten egg, bro. It tastes... <laughs> tastes like shit. <laughs> <coughs> Alright. With courage and cunning, you have conquered the Wizard of Frobaz and became the master of his domain, but the final challenge awaits. The ultimate adventure concludes in Zork 3, the Dungeon Master. Yeah. Well, we beat Zork 2, so let's go ahead and raid it. Okay, terminate. It's not It's not broken, it's just whatever. Not a bad building right here. I didn't get the uh, Gru repellent. I think that might be one of the... Uh, Attention all units, attention all units, central dispatch. One of the issues here. What's up, Bossica? How are you? Respond to raid alarm, all units respond, code 3. This is Liar 42, retain 4, respond that raid alarm from Bossica Cross. Stand by. What is up, Asuka? What were you doing tonight? What are we getting into? This is Orc 3, so I'm taking a look just to remind myself how big I have to build this map, so we're going to turn it this way because it this is a longer map. Zork 3, the Dungian Master. If you're not following Asuka Cross, you should. Member, A uh, former member of the military like myself. You're playing Bioshock Infinite? Nice, man. You're having a good time? I love that game. I love all the Bioshocks. Alright, Zork 3 is where we're going to start tonight. It's probably going to be the last game we play tonight. I don't know if I'll beat it tonight, but we'll try our hardest. Let's go ahead and rate that. Let's go ahead and rate the game. So for Zork 1, I gave it a, a god tier. Because it's great. It's a smart adventure. It's, it's, it's epic. We got Zork 2. The Wizard of Froboz. We got a digital. We did beat it. Didn't use any cheats. Almost had to, though. What would y'all rate that? <laughs> Ooh. Uh, hold on. Uh, who do you need these places? <laughs> <laughs> hmm. 
I'm always safe with daddy. Would y'all read it? Be honest with me. Between YouTube, YouTube and Twitch, what would y'all rate Zork 2 for the people who are here? I I think it's so... When I think of Zork 2, I do not like that that wizard is constantly chasing you, trying to fuck your day up. It You're already completely blind, living, like, exploring an area that can kill you in 800 different ways, and then you're adding in a guy you could pop up at any moment, and totally fuck your day up that's like the one thing i don't like about it i can deal with the carousel puzzle right because once you get to the, me the mechanical room it's not a problem it's not a d no fucking way would it ever be a d <clears throat> it's not a d no d would be like zork nemesis which is a horrible point and click i'd give it a b plus i think b plus is These nuts! Ha! Got him. Alright, we'll give it a B plus. Zork 2 is great, but the biggest dick kick is the wizard himself. He chases you. He shows up randomly and fucks you over. Great game though. Zork 2. Okay, so, oh, we're actually not playing Zork 3 tonight. We're playing Deadline. This is going to be a first for me. Oh, look at us. We're not playing Zork 3 next. First, I don't understand how to play them. You're an expert at these types of games. These are the games I grew up on, and I just love adventure games. But we need to find, uh, we need to find this other game. My Abandon Where. This is a game I've never played before, Deadline. This will be a first for me. I'm assuming it's not that one or that one. There's a Deadliest Catch game? Bro, I want to play that someday. <laughs> it looks like dog shit. Alright, it's probably this one. Uh, Infocom. Yep, it's this one. Alright, we're going to download the DOS version. We will have to read the manual because I've never played this. This is a first for me. Never played it. I don't even think we need the Windows 95 thing right now. Uh, J, yep. DOS, nope. Deadline, move that over here. Alright, it's a bat file, so we should be fine. DOS box. Never played this one before, so I have no clue what this is about. I think this is the, uh, if I remember right, this is like the really strange thing. Where you get like a time limit or something. It's a, it's a, it's a yeah, it's that game. Uh, what am I doing? We're going here. Okay, that's fixed. Come on. CD deadline, deadline, CD deadline. Deadline. All right, so this is a mystery game, so now we need like mysterious, mysterious music. Uh, royalty free mystery music. There it is. All right, this is a mystery game. It's a different one. I've never played this before. This is a first for me. Never played it before. I'm gonna look up this game, see what it's about, because I need to read the manual. 
Are we solving a, uh... Are we solving a fucking murder? Getting flashbacks to say mystery? <laughs> mystery of the, uh... The whatchamacallits? Of the druids? Alright. Uh, new map! Here we go! Alright, so South Lawn. I'm gonna draw this because I'm assuming... South Lawn. You're in, on a wide lawn just north of the entrance to the Robner Estate. Directly north at the end of a pebbled path is the Robner House, flanked to the northeast northwest by a vast expanse of well kept lawn. Beyond the house can be seen the lake front. So if I go north, that's the Robner House. Front path. You're at the Robner's front door, which is closed. Okay. What's the longest it took for you to beat one of these games? I mean, it takes me about three days to beat these if I've never played them before. I've never played Deadline, so... But Zork, like, Zork is one of the few games I owned, like, I actually owned growing up, so... On the PC, at least. Okay, we're gonna restart. South lawn. Front path. You're at the Robner's front door, which is closed. You can walk around the house from here from east to west. The south of rolling lawn extends to the entrance of this state. Okay, so we do have an east, we do have a west, but we're going to go north just to see what this game's all about. You hear footsteps inside the house. Miss Robner, dressed in black, opens the door and greets you. Hello, she says. Miss Robner, please come in. I'm afraid I can't really help you much. Surely a terrible waste of time. Not to mention upsetting, having all these police marching around the house. This has been a trying time, as I suppose you can understand. As I told Mr. Coates and the other detective, you may look around, but you must be out by 8 o'clock at the latest. Oh, I also forgot. Mr. Coates will be reading my husband's will at noon in the living room. You may attend if you wish. Miss Robner leads you in the house, closes the door behind you. Alright, so we're officially in the Robner estate. We're in the Robner estate. This is the foyer. It's the foyer of the Robner house, beautifully appointed with a fine crystal chandelier, marble floors, and a large marble top table. The front door to the south is closed. The foyer continues north. I'm gonna make myself some breakfast now. I'll be around all day if you need anything. I'll do what I can to help. Good day. She heads off to the north. So, I mean, we could choose to follow her. It says it's a long rectangular long rectangular room so that means that there's going to be branching rooms off of this north of foyer so we have south of foyer and then we have north of foyer this is the hallway north of foyer to the west is an open doorway and the east is the foot of a staircase god it's going to be one of these huh the hall continues north god it's a three-part hall We have the corner of two halls, one short hallway to the west, ending with a set of doors, and the other a long hallway leading south towards the front door. To the north are swinging double doors leading to the kitchen. This is going to be a pain in the asshole to... Wait, so am I coming in the side of the house? Because that's what it seems like. It's not very normal. Alright, south. It's broken into three parts. This is a way up. If we go north to the kitchen, right? Corner two halls, one short hallway to the west, and the other long hall. How does this make sense? It's a south lawn with like a half thing. Yeah, there's a timer. I think I have 12 hours to beat this in game. I don't like this. Because I can't, I can't understand the organization, like, the thing. South Lawn. So we're kind of coming in from the, the west. That That's all that makes sense, right? 
So north isn't truly north. The house is sideways. That's so stupid. South lawn. That's gonna be a pain in the ass to map. South lawn. There we go. North. To the front path on a house that is clearly sideways. Yeah. Including looking, right? Yeah, it does. Alright. Knock. Okay. So. Is the door to the north? Harry Potter. Uh, do, 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 do. This is the foyer of the Robner House, beautifully pointed with a fine crystal chandelier. Okay, so this goes into the foyer. North. It's the no hallway north of the foyer. West isn't open. I don't like this. I don't like this. It's so hard to, to, to do. Like, drawing this sucks. <laughs> and it's... You can tell, like, hey, I've never played this before. Because I'm struggling. I'm doubting myself. And it's not fun. Alright. You are on a wide lawn just north of the entrance to the robber. North of the entrance to the... We, wide lawn just north... At the interest of the Robner Estate. A wide lawn just north of the entrance to the Robner Estate. But how would... That doesn't make sense. It doesn't... It doesn't jive. We're on a wide lawn just north of the entrance to the Robner Estate. Suggesting that the entrance to the Robner Estate is south... Are they saying, like, estate as in a, a, a land? I don't know what an estate is. Anytime estates are mentioned, it's, like, property. So is it, like, the actual property line that they're trying to dictate? Somebody, somebody like, try to hook the wires together for me. I think this state, they mean property. Interest of the state. So we're going to assume there's like a gate down there or something. Alright. South. Lawn. When we go north. Directly north at the end of a pebble path is the Robner House. Okay, so this is the path. Flanked to the northeast, northwest by vast expanse of well-kept lawn. Beyond the house can be seen in the lakefront. Okay, so northeast. And northwest, that's going to be more lawn. We're not going to go there. We're going to go in the house first. You're at the Robner's front door, which is closed. You can walk around the house from here, east or west. Okay, so if we go here. Uh, this is the front path. By the way, project changes are open and discounted. They're down to, I think, 50,000, 50, right? So, for anybody who cares. <clears throat> I promised that would happen on the 10th. Okay, so let's knock on the door. Knock on door. This is the foyer of the Robner house. Uh, my floor is large, my floor. The front door to the south is closed. Yep, the foyer continues north. I'm going to make myself some breakfast now. I'll be around all day if you need anything. Okay. So I think the house is flipped sideways. I'm going to mark it as it's, it's a third. Uh, the front door of the south is closed. This is the hallway north of the foyer. To the west is an open doorway. Okay, so the front part is just the foyer. Second part is the foot of a staircase. That would be our up right there. 
the west is an open doorway. Corner of two halls. All right, so we're going to mark this as if it's two halls. Uh, the west short hallway going west. So there's another room there. Long hallway leading south towards the front door. Yeah, we already know about that. Is there anything to the east? No. All right, let's go north into the kitchen. All right, here's the kitchen. This is the Robner kitchen, quite large with full complement of appliances and labor-saving devices. On one wall, a beautifully crafted shelf unit contains rare china, a unique hand-painted family heirloom depicting scenes from Greek mythology. The china consists of many place settings of plates, teacups, and saucers. There are several cabinets which likely contain silverware, glasses, and the like. To the east is a pantry. Alright, so we have some suspects. Clearly we need to solve a murder here, so let's go ahead and write down our suspects. We have uh, Miss Rourke. Miss Robner, my bad. See, the problem is I don't know what I need to ask her. And that's what's throwing me off. Let's let's go ahead and crack open the manual real quick. Uh, deadline DOS manual. <clears throat> Take the vest and out of the... I can wait minutes, okay. Oh my god. Alright, what's wrong will matter? Fingerprint, okay. Floor of his library, the victim of overdose of Ebulon and medicine to take nightly for severe bouts of depression. Okay, so they're trying to say it's a suicide. Maybe. Hmm. Alright. So let's go ahead and take notes. We have Miss Rourke. My bad. Miss Robner, who is the wife. Which is the wife. Do we have Rourke? And we have Warren Coates, who is the lawyer. What's up, Raptor? Corpus Delecti, the body of evidence. That's what that means. Robner Marshall. What's that? He's got an injury on his head. No injuries marked suspicious nature for small bruises left typical consistent fall on the floor from the chair. 27% milligrams for Ebulon therapeutic. Okay, so Ebulon is the... We're going to use that as evidence. Ebulon. All 
All right, death was at 1 a.m. Plus or minus one hour. Yep, that's about right. All right, we got Miss Dunbar. I don't know who that is. Okay, so no trace of stuff. They analyzed a the teacup. Oh God, man, you really gotta rely on these. How'd you come to find Mr. Robner? When I woke up this morning, I noticed that Marsh was not in bed. I wasn't alarmed, really. It was not unusual for him to work late at night in the library and fall asleep there. I went down the hall and I knocked on the door. He didn't answer, so I knocked even harder. That didn't work. I started calling his name loudly. So loud, actually, that I woke up Miss Dunbar and George. Who's George? We were all gathered there, knocking and yelling, and finally Miss Rourke, our housekeeper. Okay, so Miss Rourke is the housekeeper. She's the help. Alarm enough to come upstairs, she just called the police, which she did. They arrived about 20 minutes later and started breaking down the door with axes. When they entered the room, we found Marshall laying on the floor face down. He usually keeps the door locked when he worked? Almost always. He was pretty secretive about his work, and he liked to be alone when he worked. Uh, do you know of any reason why your husband might have wanted to take his own life? He's been very depressed lately. You know, his business, Robner Corporation, is not doing well, and there's a talk of selling out to a larger firm. Marshall founded the company, what, about 26 years ago, and he's been desperately trying to find some way of saving it. The pills we found by his body, do you know what they are? Yes, they're Ebilon tablets. It's an antidepressant his doctor prescribed for him last week. Has he been acting less depressed? I don't know. I haven't really noticed much change. Did your husband ever talk of suicide? He did, actually, though I never took it seriously. He would talk about how everything would be easier if he were dead, but then he would start again talk about how he was going to have to keep the business going. I'm stunned, really. Mr. Robner, do you know of anyone who might have wanted to kill your husband? Why, no, of course not. He wasn't a friendly man. He was very quiet. He was a great philanthropist, you know, and everyone that knew him respected him. I can't imagine anybody wanting to hurt Marshall. Do you really suspect he didn't commit suicide? I didn't suspect anything. I just want to understand what's happening. You were Mr. Robner's personal secretary, is that right? So this is Dunbar is the secretary so the secretary gave that teacup to him makes i want to see what's in the will so zork 2 referred to things included in the box no no this isn't zork 2 this is deadline we beat zork 2 i'll change that we beat zork 2 I can beat a Zork in one day, dude. <laughs> Zorks are easy. I was saying the last person to see Mr. Robner alive can tell me about that. Why is the problem some tea? It'll about 11 p.m. Okay, so she says 11 p.m. Tea. Nice to expect to work late. He also took tea at that hour. I brought him the tea and he asked me to leave. That's all. Did Mr. Robner seem upset? He did appear quite nervous, but he had been upset for some time, as you know. Uh, do you know who was working on this evening? No, I wasn't with him except for that time. Do you recall whether the pills, the Ebulon pills, were on his desk when he came in? No, I don't remember. Stumbar, were you with Miss Robner when the door was opened by the police? Yes. Do you remember her reaction? Anything she might have said? She didn't really react much. I think she said anything except he's dead or something of that sort. She just stood there with the rest of us until you people arrived. Uh, how are the Robners getting along? I mean, they were happily married. I don't think so. He's quiet and well dreamy. She's always scolding him for paying too much attention to the business and to his good works. They rarely went out lately, which seemed to upset Miss Robner quite a bit. She had friends of her own that she used to visit. I think she would have gone insane otherwise. Thank you, Miss Dunbar. Oh, and one last thing. You prepared the tea for Mr. Robner? Yes, I started the water boiling about the quarter of, and then poured the tea when I heard the whistle from the living room. You weren't in the kitchen during that time? I just told you no. Was anyone else awake in the house while you were waiting? Yes, I believe that both George and Miss Robner were awake. Who is George? Or George coming down, reading for a bit, then retiring. Do you believe anyone might have a reason to kill Mr. Robner? No, I can't imagine it. Uh, thank you, Miss Dunbar. Miss Dunbar, were you home at all last night? Well, no, actually. I was out with a friend last night. We didn't get back until about 10.30 or thereabouts. Thank you. All right. So we got another guy, Baxter. So many suspects. All right, so we have Miss Robner. We have Miss Rourke. We have William Coates. We're having to do a lot of note taking for this because I don't want to have to keep cross referencing it um, every single time. She's the help. Then we've got. Miss Dunbar, which is the secretary. 
We got a guy named George, who I have no fucking clue who that is. Then we've got Baxter. Who's Baxter? Okay, Baxter's the business partner. Oh, uh, so Rob, they tell me there have been problems lately with the business. Can you tell me what there are? Yes, the business problems. Some of them quite large. Marshall and I were working on a plan to solve these problems to get the company back on its feet again. All right, Marshall is going to be the name of the first name of Marshall Robner. And he is the deceased. Uh, company proceeds to be forced to take drastic action. I hope that I can hold things together now that Marshall's dead. He was the founder of the business, controlled many things by himself. Mr. Robner ever feel talked to you about personal problems or how he felt? No, we were business partners, not intimate friends. I don't think he really had any close friends. I knew he'd gotten himself very upset about the business, but that's the extent of it. When was the last time you saw Mr. Robner? Yesterday afternoon at our office in town. Where were you after work? Last night with it's my concert night at the Hartford Symphony. I go there quite regularly. After the concert, it's about 10 o'clock. I went home. Received a call from Miss Dunbar this morning telling me the tragedy, and I arrived there just a few minutes ago. All right, so we're going to do another, I guess, another thing so I can keep down notes for their alibis. Uh, business partner Baxter. Baxter's alibi was that he was at a concert alone, which means nobody can validate that at 10 p.m. And then Miss Dunbar, the secretary, she, according to the manual, or at least the appendix that's provided, she was out at 1030 with her friends, I think, right? All right, with a friend. Out with friend at 10.30. Okay, George. Who is George? Shout out to George and Marshall, but I don't think he would ever fall through. George and Marshall would always die. George has been living like a spoiled child all his life. 25 now. Okay, so George is a son, a.k.a. the, the inheritor. So George Robner. There we go. He's 25 now. He just spends money games all way. Being the Robner's only child, he gets away with murder. Marshall would lecture him and threaten to cut him off without a cent. And then the yelling would start. Eventually, Marshall would give in. When was the last time you heard this? Actually, I heard it again last week. Strange now that I think of it. They went at it just last week. I hear that Marshall told George that he had decided to disinherit him. He even mentioned it to me at the office the next day. He seemed pretty serious. I suppose the financial troubles of the company may have been responsible for the attitude. Are you at the house often? You say you've heard some of these shouting matches. Well, I'm not there often, only on occasion. I heard it uh, once or twice and been told of other times. All right, here's George. Mr. Robner, I've been told by Mr. Baxter that you and your father have some serious arguments lately. Could you tell me what they're about? I don't think that's your business. I'm told they had to do with your habit of wasting or gambling your father's money. So? Uh, I've been told that he threatened to disinherit you. Yeah, he said he was going to. I'll bet he didn't, though. He never has. All right. Okay. Here's Miss Anderson, or Miss Rourke. So you remember, I remember that about 10.30 or so, you mean 10.30 p.m. Yes, by 10.30 I was up in my room doing some reading. Everyone was upstairs except Miss Dunbar, who just returned home. She went upstairs around 11, bringing Robner's tea, which that checks out. I remember saying goodnight uh, to her on the way up, and that's the last I heard in the morning when all the shouting and banging going on upstairs. No, that isn't right. George was downstairs also for a while, only about 10 minutes or so. All right, so George was downstairs... was downstairs for 10 minutes around 11 o'clock p.m. because that's when Miss Dunbar got home and made the tea, right? Got upstairs at night? I don't think so, but we've got Rourke saying that she went upstairs uh, reading at 10.30 p.m. Cool. Could someone have gone upstairs during the night? I don't rightly think so, at least not before 3 or 4. You see, I like to do some reading late at night. I was reading this really exciting Mr. Story. And Lord, I was up till nearly 4 o'clock. Cool. So she's been up since 4 in the morning before I finished. And who do you think the murderer was? 
Really, Mr. Rourke, let's take the matter hand. Do you keep your door closed at night when you're reading? Yes, sir. So it's possible someone may have entered the house gone upstairs without your knowledge. No, sir, I don't think so. Why don't you try the stairs yourself? For a new house, those stairs are the noisiest I've ever heard. Uh, my door's right beside it, too. When the Robners owned a little cat, I can remember hearing every footstep creaking up the stairs. Don't know why they don't ever fix it up. I guess it never bothered them any. Uh, is it possible that someone may have entered after you went off to sleep? Well, I suppose it might be, but not before. How long has Miss Dunbar been living there? Ever since the place was built. She has an awful lot of work for Mr. Robner. You know, I don't think she could have gotten... He could have gotten along without her. Although, that's not my business to say. He was always so nervous fretting about everything and forgetting to do this and that. It seemed that she was always covering his tracks, if you get my meaning. Do you have any reason to suspect anyone of wanting to harm Mr. Robner? Well, of course. I've heard all the screaming and fussing with George and Mr. Robner. Uh, that's been going on for years now, so I don't make much of it anymore, but I can't imagine wanting to hurt poor Mr. Robner. He was such a sweet man. Okay. I don't care about this. Saving a game position. Alright, so we could at least have some information. We could, like, start talking to people. Uh, ask Miss Robner about George. A child. He may be a man in age, but he still hasn't really grown up. He'll find himself someday, but in the meantime, he could still he can be a trial. I guess Marshall and I weren't too lenient. Probably still are, but he's our son after all. We can't throw him out on the street. Ask Miss Robner about argument. Ask Miss Robner about shouting. Ask Miss Okay, you've clearly told me that that's something I can use in the manual. But what's wrong? Okay. So what's wrong is the proper... I don't know much about that. Argument. Yelling. Shouting. Screaming. Ask Miss Robner about Baxter. Baxter's been my husband's partner for a long time, but they're not close friends. Baxter's always had the head for making money, and Marshall had the creative spark for new products. Two of them were perfect for each other in the early days. Of course, things haven't been going well lately. I guess none of that matters now. All right, so no reason to, to talk to them, I guess. So we're in the corner. We're in the south. North, we go into the kitchen. Is there anything, any other exits here? Brother! Okay. So we're gonna... Obviously, we're gonna fuck up a lot playing this, so we're gonna have to go back and we'll just breeze through it, but we need to figure it out. Okay, so... To the east, there's a pantry, a walk-in pantry. Pantry with shelves containing a large selection of canned and packaged foods, fruits, vegetables, dry goods. Sitting on the wood shelves is a food assortment. Inspect food assortment. What do you mean? Okay. Can I just say your name? Miss Rourke. What's wrong? I don't know nothing about no weather. George. Uh, Miss Rourke. George. Okay, the parser in this game is fucking finicky and it really frustrates me. 
Like it's stupid. Like it's pissing me off. Cause you're rely you're making me rely on speech patterns, but like I don't know. Am I am I the asshole for judging this? Cause this is just weird. Okay, ask Miss Rourke about George. George is something, I tell you. The black sheep of the family is what I'd say. Never met nobody with less respect for money. I think it grew on trees. Not that don't around here. Well, there it goes shooting off my mouth again. See, the question, the problem is, is I don't know how to ask specific questions for answers that I need. And it's very strange how they, they managed to do this. So we're in the south in the corner. East, we can't go. West is the dining room, okay? Dining. We've entered the dining room, a long table seating 12 is at the center of the room, and a large trestle table is against the south wall. A large picture window in the north allows a view of the rose garden. Hanging on the wall are several cheerful paintings, including one by Surratt, which appears to be an original. Can we move the painting? Is there anything hiding behind there? Okay, fine. Alright, so to the north is a viewing area, right? Can we go south? No, north. North. Look out window. Through the window of the rose garden, we see seen off to north, a wide lawn ending on a blue lake. Okay. So it's just, it's whatever. So is that going to be the... Am I building this house right now? I think I am. So far, this is what I got. And it's, like I said, we're not making much progress in this one because this is like, it's rudimentary as fuck, but we're building the house. And I don't like it. And then I got all of my my information over to the right. All my all the people that we're talking to, suspects and stuff, and it's just trash. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not gonna judge it yet. I'm not gonna judge it yet. But once we map out this whole place, we can make some we can make some decisions. So let's go east, south. Is Robner off to the north, ducks into a room and to the west. What's she doing over there? Alright, west. So this is the living room, alright? Alright, so this is where Miss Dunbar is. This is a large and impressive room whose furnishings bespeak the great personal wealth of the Robners. The south side of the room is a large bay window now closed, which looks out in the front yard. A wood pile sits beside a huge field stone fireplace. A double doorway leading to the main hall is the only exit. Pictures of Miss Robner's colonial ancestors lie in one wall. The room contains formal seating for at least 15 people and several groups of chairs and couches, tables and cabinets, all the finest mahogany and walnut complete the furnishings. Uh, one of the tables is a telephone. Let's fingerprint the telephone. No good prints. All right. Fingerprint book. Look at book. Deadline. I, okay. Throw book at Miss Dunbar. Take book. Throw book at Miss Dunbar. <laughs> All right, so east is to the bottom of the stairs. It's like four open archways lead north and south, or west and south. Let's go. Let's go south, see what that is. Another fucking hallway, bro. So this is the south hallway. South hallway. Door to the south is closed. Let's open the door. Mrs. Rourke's room. Okay, so this is where she said she lives at the bottom of the stairs. So this makes sense makes a lot of sense actually All right, I need to expand let's expand
Bedroom of the housekeeper, Miss Rourke, is simply furnished. A single bed flanked by bare wooden end tables just below closed window in the south end of the room. The floor is hardwood with no rug. The only exit is the door to the north, which is open. So there's nothing of importance in here. Is that what you're saying? So that's the maid's room. Look at end table. East, west hallway, door to the south. Okay, so this is another fucking hallway. Oh, man. It's a very silly way of designing a map. I much prefer the Zork rooms where they're just, you know, rooms. Alright, the south hallway. Uh, the south, the small door is open. All right, another door to the east is closed. All right, we got something to the east. We got anything to the north? No. All right, south. South closet. This is a little used south closet. Could be nods in and oats, whatever. The only exit is to the north. So this is just a small closet. So far, the only person I can blame is George and just doesn't make any sense. Is Mr. Rourke's bathroom aside from the usual Baxter Fisher two shells fixed to the wall, the door at the east? Okay, so is there anything interesting here? Okay, all right, so we're officially, was there not something up north? Okay, so there's nothing north. So we've mapped out the first floor to its completion. There's nothing else we can do. Pretty straightforward. We've got the kitchen and we've got the help, which is the maid, right? Over on the east side. So let's go ahead and go upstairs. You're on a landing halfway up the flight of stairs. You notice that the stairs are indeed quite make a noise when stepped on. So they are creaky, meaning that She's telling the truth. But they are creaky. Top of the staircase for short hallways from north to south. Okay. Uh, short runners run north south a quarter of the length of the house heads west. Yeah, because. No. What do you mean it heads west? That makes no sense. Alright, I'm drawing this on a second plane because I'm... I'm so fucking over this already. I'm not mad at it. Don't get me wrong. I'm not mad at the game. I'm frustrated at... The, the way they've mapped this is very silly. Like, how can, how can a cave system be easier to navigate than, you know... <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Alright, so we're going to mark this as up. And then we're going to do second floor, hoping there's only two floors. Alright, so... At the top of the stairs, what do we have? Look. We at the top of the staircase where short hallways run north, north and south. Okay. So, top of stairs will be its own thing top of stairs short hallways run north and south north and south there is a down here and then west is going to be its own thing so let's go north north upstairs hall okay north upstairs hall to the east is a small room okay and this is the end of it all right so it's not that that not that far it's a stupid hallway 
This is our guest room, okay. Guest room. Uh, bed tables and a chair. Window looks out towards the east. Look out window. Alright, there's a shed. That's interesting. It's a shed on the east lawn. We'll have to bear that in mind. A lake in the background. We should also go check out that lake. Again, this is not... with it. I could look up a walkthrough. We could probably beat this in one sitting. But, um... When you're playing games like this, A, you need to map out the entire area that you're at to include everything that you encounter before you can formulate a plan on how you want to attack it. Like with the Zork specifically, one of the things that are cool is that you start going around and you see objects and you're like, okay, this object can interface with this, because this can interface with this, this can interface with this. But when we're talking about mystery games like this, it can be a little bit different. It can be a lot more daunting and it, it's obviously very daunting here. So let's go west, let's go is there anything else? Nope, south. Let's go south again. This is the south upstairs hall. Turns the corner here and continues east. All right, so we do have another east sort of thing. Door to the south is open. Let's go south. Dunbar's bathroom, okay. Let's take toilet, bath, and medicine cabinet closed above the sink. Ooh, interesting. Open medicine cabinet. Cat a lot of low blow. What's low blow? Ooh. So I want to read that because, you know, this gives us an interesting thing to say that she may have combined weapon, you know, drugs. She could have put low blow inside of his, his, uh, teacup, which Lord knows what that is. Examine medicine cabinet. Uh, nail polish. Examine polish. Okay, examine aspirin. Okay, so the aspirin is 30 milligrams at 5 GR. Ontario brand of Methspar and USP 10 mil, so that's 10 milligrams. We don't know the, the ratio for it. That's fine. I'm going to ask Miss Dobar about the low blow. Okay, so that's a sedation. So she's got three medicines here. We've got cough medicine. And only one teaspoon that she's supposed to take. Okay, close medicine cabinet. Look. Phone ringing. Miss Dunbar. Low blow. What is low blow? Did you use this today? Fingerprint, Miss Dunbar. What are you talking about? She's got fucking fingerprints! Uh, George. 
Ask about George. Ask Miss Dunbar about George. Nobody likes George much. He's always alone when he's here, and that's the only when he can't get more money to waste. I think he's just been waiting for the day when his father's money could be his. I can't say I miss him when he's not here. A thoroughly obnoxious child. Punch Miss Dunbar. Hit Miss Dunbar. Fist. Kiss Dunbar. <laughs> North Knock Door North East East Up South East North East Okay, so this is the end of the hall Holland's here, the south is a walk-in closet. Okay. There's clean equipment and supplies. Examine closet. So I'll search if you can see a room would take hours. A more productive approach would be to examine search various items and interests within a room. A cursory search would take on order seven minutes, but it wouldn't reveal much. Would you like to do it anyway? Yes. Damn. All right, we're gonna mark an X there. That's the first time they've offered me that. It's telling me it's not in my, my thing, but it's frustrating. Stupid. Okay. Alright, so this is the hallway. Here the west the staircase doors on both sides, north and south. Okay, north and south, north. Okay, so north is the master bedroom, so this is just another hall. Master bedroom. So the Robiner's master bedroom decorating the Queen Anne style. A large four-poster bed with uh, paired end tables fills the south end of the room. One of the end tables is a telephone. Dresser is a small chair and a lounge are closed against the walls. North wall contains a balcony window which is closed. An open doorway leads east to the bathroom. Okay, large mirror with a uh, gilt frame hands on the each wall. Okay, let's go into the bathroom. Dude, there's a lot of medicine here. This is a bathroom. There's a jacuzzi. Hanging plants get the room. Also, travel glass here on the counter is a bottle of Sneezo. Examine Sneezo. Okay, so the Sneezo is for Miss Robner. And it's one tablet every three. I'm assuming all of the other medicine, the aspirin, the low blow, and the cough medicine belongs to Dunbar. And let's go ahead and examine Allergon. Allergon with alcohol is dangerous in case of overdose, consult if it doesn't tell me what it is. Take two tablets. Okay, so this is for, again, for her. Allergon two every four hours so I haven't found the the depression meds yet keep looking for it we haven't found it yet uh, bu -bu -bum. all right this is miss Dunbar's room how is she sleeping across oh they, I, how much you want to bet he's sneaking out and getting some pussy in the middle of the night but her personal bathroom is all the way around the corner. Okay. Bedroom door is open. Okay, look. 
east, south, west, north, south. Examine bed. Examine four cum stains. <laughs> sure it's not. Uh, you take the phone here, enough familiar man's voice say, hello, is Leslie there? You start to reply, but Mr. Robner picks up the phone from the extension here. I got it, Inspector. She says, hello? Oh, it's you. I can't talk right now. I'll call you back soon. Bye. Here, two clicks and line goes dead. Oh, so who's Leslie? Who's Leslie? We need to go ask her about Miss Leslie. Drop phone. Pick up phone. Throw phone. Window. Damn. Okay, south. Miss Robner. Ask Miss Robner about Leslie. Leslie. Ask Miss Robner Leslie. Who is Leslie? This game is something else, isn't it? Need to restart our music. We've already gone through our music, I think. Yeah. Damn near an hour of tunes right there. Shit. Okay. So we've got everything mapped out. We've been everywhere. There we go. We win! No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay, uh, north, north. Knock on door, look. South. Where's this library that he was dead in? That's what I need to try to find. I don't know what to do. Oh, the it continues west. Oh, fuck me. I didn't fully map it. Okay. So there's another part to this hall. In the curry cafe, place your closet full of linen stairs to the east are equidistant. The closet to the north is open and rather shallow, so we have a Another damn hallway here. To north is a closet. All right, there's nothing here that that we care about, so we can dump that south hallway south. Look, stairs to the east and window to the west are about equidistant. just a long ass hallway isn't it okay so George's and this is George's room oh, there's a small liquor cabinet stereo with records of tapes the leading the hallway to the north is another open door to the east is open and this is George's bathroom Let's see what meds he's got
Uh, fingerprint the shaving gear. Okay, West. Oh, Leslie is the first name of Miss Robner. Fuck's sake. Well, that gets rid of that one thing I was thinking about. Closet south, west, west. Okay, so this is the other end of the hallway. The last part. And this is the library. So this is where we're going to be kind of searching extensively. Library. So the library Mr. Robner's body is found is decorated in a simple yet comfortable style. Mr. Robner obviously spent a great deal of time here. White executive desk sits before tall balcony windows which lie at the north of the room. The telephone is sitting on the desk. The east side of the room is composed of three large bookshelf units containing numerous volumes on many topics. The floor is carpeted from floor to wall to wall. The massive oak door which blocked the entrance has been forcibly knocked off its hinges and is lying by the doorway. A pencil is lying on the floor near the desk. Okay, so we got a pencil. Uh, beside the desk is a large collapsible tray. Sitting on the tray is a bowl containing a white powdery substance. You doing cocaine, bro? On the desk is a wicker waste piss basket. All right, the basket contains a bunch of papers. Let's look at the basket papers. Turn on side lying on the floor is a beautiful teacup. Okay, there's the teacup. Uh, lying on top of the desk is a pad of white note paper. Note pad. Desk calendar is here, open to July 7th. There's a bottle of Ebilon. Okay, so there, his Ebilon is here. Finally! We're getting somewhere. Uh, let's examine pencil. Examine notepad. Alright, take pencil. Use... Uh, use pencil on notepad. Use pencil. Oh! Yeah, we got impressions. Impressions are a real thing. So it says... Baxter... Probably the last time. Insist. Op. Merg. Nitty. Uh. Force. Documents. You. Possess. Plica. Just probably complicate. Why? Focus. S. Recons. Late. Uh. Ursha. <laughs> okay. Well, we've got something there. <sighs> okay. So, Ebilon tablets are for him. Yeah, 
and they're 25 milligrams which is strange because it says once or twice a day but more than 27 milligrams is according to the thing equals death it's weird All right, so this is evidence we need it. Can we fingerprint it? No fingerprints on the teacup. Can we take the pad? Yes. Examine pad. So that's on there now. Examine pencil. Can we fingerprint the pencil? Seems kind of stupid, but we'll try. Pencil. No good prints, okay. Uh, examine calendar. July 7th, the only listed appointment with Baxter, 2 p.m. in the Robner Corp office. Okay, so on July 7th, we had an appointment with Baxter at 2 p.m. Turn calendar page. Turn page of calendar. Uh, 9 a.m. call Coates. Will completed. All right, so... This gives us something. So July 8th, he wanted to call Will Coates to finalize his will. So that's something. It's not much of anything, but it's better than nothing. All right, what's this substance? Examine powder. Okay, no. Uh, Three rounds of paper, one's a shopping list, another's list of current stock price last is the layer of the board directors around the core. Okay, so they're they're not important papers. Oh, shit. Okay, so the bull has fingerprints. Good to know. Okay. Balcony windows. Okay, so, can we... Alright, so the balcony is north. Balcony's bare furniture, though, has a beautiful view of the rose garden, the north lawn, and the lake. A metal railing around the balcony prevents an axle drop of the thorny rose below the window as the balcony and the library is open. Okay. Well, he's made sturdy metal, helps prevent acid falls. There's a small area of paint scraped off the outside edge. Ooh. Did he jump off there?
Carbon spits up very quickly except for a few smalls. Stains. Can we move the rug? No. Dried mud. Okay, so so far, the theory is whoever broke in here and killed him potentially had mud on their shoes, went to the balcony, and then jumped over the balcony. That's a theory that we can run with so far. So, mud on the rug. The balcony has mud on it. So, we need to go, we need to go look under there. So, east, east, south, east, 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 south. Uh, north, east, south, downstairs. Down. Fingerprints. Blonde and Robner at Miss Dunbar. Okay. So. Robner and Dunbar. For this white powder. Let's go back up. Where am I at? Ask Miss Dunbar Mud. Ask Miss Dunbar about mud. Ask Miss Dunbar about powder. Miss Dunbar about bowl. Ask Miss Dunbar about bowl in library. See, this is. It is, but the problem is, in this this game alone, the parser, Refix, because you've, you've played a bunch of these. You've seen them. You know how they work. The parser in this game really works against you. I'm supposed to interrogate people, but it's so specific to where it's like, okay, I have evidence, but I can't talk to anybody about it because they're, they're acting like robots. Yeah. Yeah. Ask Dunbar about obvious cocaine. Cocaine? Cocaina? Cocaine isn't in your vocabulary. Yeah, okay, sure. Alright, well, I think I figured out the first part of this. We got the, the obvious hints. Right? From that part. Which makes sense. Alright. Northeast, down, down, south, south. Why am I in her bedroom? I don't want to be in her bedroom. West, north, south, south, south. Mr. McNabb, who's he? Miss, Miss Dunbar is on Medicaid. She sounds old. <laughs> and we got somebody else. Who's Mr. McNabb? Hey! McNab, who are you? Who? Ask McNab, who are you? Ask McNab, McNab. All right, let's refer to the manual again. How do I talk to people? That's what I want to know. I just want to know how to talk people. See, this is... Okay, sure. McNab, tell me about yourself. What do you mean it's not clear? Mr. McNab, tell me about yourself. The manual doesn't even doesn't even work right. West, west. There's a sprawling lawn nose. Okay, so we're gonna map this out too. We didn't really map out the outside, but are we west of the house? We need to go to the rose garden because that's directly beneath the uh, the thing, though. Okay, so this is the west lawn. the northeast we have the rose garden 
which makes sense. So let's go northeast. The edge of a large rose garden meticulously maintained by the gardener, Mr. McNabb. Okay, so he's the gardener. He is said to be exceedingly proud of his particular garden, which is the envy of the neighbors. Rose, rose, uh, roses are neatly arranged in sweet fragrance. The flowers is not worth a trip here itself. An orchard to the east contains many varieties of fruit trees and wide lawns lie to the east and north. The roses themselves are to the south, filling the area between you and the back of the house. So that would be under the balk. I mean, to the east, we have an orchard. I don't I don't want to Oh, there we go. All right, we got a ladder. This got mud on it. So, so far, we got mud, mud on a ladder, mud on a railing, mud on the rug where Mr. Uh, old Boy was killed, right? Never trust the gardener, it's true. It's true. It's southeast. Let's see, look. Let's talk to him about that. The windows, lawn, south, west, north, south. Where's Mr. McNabb? I am talk to McNab. Was that not his fucking name? Talk to McNab. I don't know. Say to McNab, tell me about ladder. Say to McNab, ladder. I, brother, man. This is going to be the reason why I, I rate this game as low. Because I, I love mysteries. I truly do. But I have no clue what I'm supposed to do. What is wrong? You talking to yourself again? Hey, McNab. What is wrong? McNab. What's wrong? Oh. 
Okay, 2D poles. Those 2D poles are probably the ladder. I don't think it's the gardener. Ladder. Tell me about ladder. What about it? I use it for cleaning the gutters and pruning the trees. Tell me about mud on ladder. Tell me about mud. No, nothing about boot that. Are you Canadian? I don't know nothing about that. Is he Scottish? Tell me about Leslie. Care much about them from the house. I barely even know which is which. Which shakes his head and he continues around his work. All right, so he's just gonna be a tool. He's a tool. Ask about murder. Tell me about murder. Tell me about Scotland. Oh, okay, we don't know about that. Ask me about. Tell me about England. Of course, of course. Okay, so I think I've got enough shit lined up. Oh. Assault McNab. Kick McNab. Shabby behavior is disgusting. Override. Main. Tenant one. Fuck. <laughs> it's a Robocop reference. Um. I think I'm done for tonight. I think I'm done for tonight. I can only play these for so long before my head starts hurting. So, and I'm still waiting for my voice to come back. Once my voice comes back, we're gonna we're obviously gonna go a little bit longer. But I'm not exactly where I want to be. I made a lot of progress today. Can't complain. Uh, this will be our next major little adventure that we have, and I do believe that we're making some fairly decent progress with it. I can't complain. Uh, let's go ahead and end that. Thank you so much, everybody, for hanging out with me today. I greatly appreciate it, and I hope that you've enjoyed these games so far. I know that they're very different from what I usually do. Trust me, it's different for me as well. Uh, between racing games, sports games, and text adventures, I don't tend to play them that often because not a lot of people like them. They're, they're kind of boring. To me, they're not, but to you, they might be. For my YouTube audience, I am going to try to release a video tomorrow. I know that I say that every single day, but I don't know what's uh, going on with my throat until I'm at that point, right? Until that, that day has come. So I'm working on the interview with Al Lowe. I've already got all the raw stuff done for that. I just need to make sure it looks pretty and to record my intro and extras to those as well. Um, I don't know what video I'm gonna put out tomorrow. Maybe a series slayer could be System Shock for the SNES. I know I've wanted to do that for a while, but either way, feel free to come on over, over to the uh, Twitch side of things because there's a lot more stuff you can do, be it sound effects, stream loose cards stuff like that um feel free to come on over cool for my twitch audience if you haven't hit that follow button please do consider it i play a bunch of games from the 70s to now you never really know what you're going to see and you're going to get exposed to a lot of cool games i have a youtube i don't know if nick is here but i'll do it myself i am a youtube partner i also have a discord feel free to check that out um that's where i post the schedule and stuff and finally if you have the channel points or the stream loops card and you want to guide the raid, feel free to do so at this time. We're going to go find somebody playing an adventure game, probably a point and click. We might see that tonight, especially if uh, 
Stealthy Golem is on, otherwise probably not. Let's see. The finals. Do do do. Adventure Jess. Oh, she's such a sweetheart. Um. Nah, we don't really have anybody do anything special. Let's go to, uh... We're gonna go hang out with uh, Adventure Jess, because I'm gonna ask her what she thinks about Tomb Raider. Jess is a sweetheart. I know her in person. She's fun, so go give her some love. Adventurer Jessica. Cool. Tomorrow, we're gonna be playing uh, Tengai Machio. Oh, shit. Took you long enough. Jesus. Alright, raid. Nah, it's fine. We'll go raid uh, the good Jared. The good Jared. He's playing Mega Man. It's good for your spirit. It's according to according to him, that is. All right. Uh, let's go send him some love. As always, from my family to your family, good energy, good vibes. Fortify out. Keep the flames home burning and the flames of retro gaming burning even stronger. Come on over on this raid. Be there or be a fucking circle. Your choice. <laughs>